So okay. um, I think that, I, I mean, so I think we could just, you've raised your issues. If anyone else has any other information, we don't have, we don't have to discuss anything now. I think let's, that's what I'm saying. Let's not discuss it. Let's move on. Okay, and I just want to that you honest, want additional that I, information. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, and so, unless anyone has an objection, I'm just going to go. We'll just adjourn it. The applicant hears what we what you've asked for, and we can move on. Okay. Okay. The next item on the agenda, public the next public hearing is five a twenty twenty. Brian and Ilori Taylor, 600 Lorraine Street. Are we waiting for the applicant or are we going to start? It's a public hearing. We're waiting for the applicant. There's nothing to discuss until we know if okay. the is there or not. Right, the applicant, that's all. So. Have you heard William, is the others? Yeah, the, the applicant is here. No. No. Yeah, Mr. Taylor, you have, uh, you have the floor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so Sid Shulman, our architect should be on as well. You see him? Yeah, okay, let me bring him in. Oh. Hold on, let's see. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 Okay, there. Do you want to allow me to share my screen? Oh, here it is. Okay. Mm. Everybody see that? Yep. yep. Okay. So if, if you recall, we were here at the last meeting uh, applying for a few variances. The, I'll just kind of refresh everybody. The proposed project is for a second story addition on top of an existing one story portion of a two family house. The two family house is an existing non-conforming use in a one uh in an r5 zone which is a one family zone so we were here last time and i guess we had our variances that we were requesting slightly different than what they should have been um so i'll go through the project the pro the, the intent of the project is for a family who has been here eight years to just basically increase more square footage for their house, create a uh, second floor for their portion of the dwelling unit. It's an owner occupied uh, two family dwelling. The variances that are required are um, one uh, would be for Two, four parking spaces would be required for two units, uh, two parking spaces each. Existing, there are about two parking spaces, it's very tight, so we are proposing to expand the parking area by about 160 feet to fit uh, two parking spaces properly. Uh, we cannot fit four, so the variance would be for two parking spaces. Uh, it should be noted that it's been this way forever and uh, it's no major change to the function, no additional cars because of this project, no additional units, no additional families. So everything would kind of stay as it is. The other variance required would be for the FAR. We would be about 400 and some 45 square feet over on the FAR. Uh, we looked at the floor plans last week and kind of saw that it was just a logical layout. It wasn't egregious in any way. We weren't asking for too much. We were just basically aligning with the existing construction for this one story addition. We're creating two bedrooms and a home office and everybody needs a home office now uh, and a bathroom. So that's basically the intent of the addition. Um, the other variance required would be for the side yard. 
So this is a corner lot, so we determined that there are two fronts and two sides and no rear. So the existing dimension from the side yard is 5.8 feet, where six feet is required. We would align with that, so it's a 0.2 of a foot, which is, I don't know, two and a half inches or so of a variance, which uh, is not significant at all. And then the other variance, which came up last time at our presentation, is the variance required more, I guess, more of an administrative area variance, which is to the enlargement of an existing non-conforming use. So I guess doing anything to a non-conforming use would require a variance so that's not something that we can quantify or, or, or measure, but it's more a something that this board has the permission to grant. I'll go through the project just a little bit again. So basically this hatched area here where it says one story would be the proposed addition on top of the existing one story. Um, you saw the floor plans. This area here in red is unit number uh, the tenant or the second unit, unit number two uh, on the second floor, they take up half of the dwelling. Um, you can see by the elevations that, you know, the, I, I know this is not the architecture review board, but in general, it's within style and context of the neighborhood. Uh, it's not creating any adverse conditions in terms of blocking sunlight or views uh, for anybody. Um, in fact, we have three letters that were submitted to the board in, uh, in support of the applicant, uh, which I'll get to. Uh, this kind of shows how the house is broken up, the basement storage, the first floor, uh, the second floor. So the green is all the owner occupied unit and then the red is the unit number two, the tenant. Um, and then we talked about just the exterior review. Again, I know it's not the architectural review board, but it helps show the parking area and the mass of the proposed addition, which we feel is not out of scale at all. We feel aligning with the existing first floor just makes a lot of sense construction wise, financial wise, and making the best use of the space. And then I believe I have, well, we went through the, the five um, uh, questions in terms of, you know, is it self-created? I mean, it's an existing non-conforming situation, both the two family as well as the existing setbacks. So it's self-created in that we would request it, but the existing situations kind of dictate that we felt it's not an impact on the environment. We're not creating additional stormwater runoff because we're not creating additional uh, impervious surface from this addition because it's a, on an existing footprint. Uh, overall, we're residing the house and windows. So overall, the, the, the big picture of the project is it'll be kind of better for the neighborhood. Um, and we do have letters in support of the application from Patty and Nato Tempesta um, that I believe they sent those in. They are um, 729 Jefferson, which is around the corner, 739 Jefferson from Gary and Samantha Williams, also um, looking for the improvement and upgrade the neighborhood values. And then another letter from William and Jill Caslin with no objections. So that's kind of my re-presentation that we did last week. The main reason we came back is the corrections of the variances. And I noticed on the agenda, it was written that we also were going for a variance for the combined side yard setbacks, but that's not accurate because we do meet those. We have 5.8 and 8.6, and the requirement is 14, and we're at 14.2. So I don't know where that one came up because that wasn't in our denial nor on my drawings. Um, um, yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. You go. Um, if you're hey. done. Um, well, let me ask, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak on this application?
I take that as a no, um, since no one, right? William, no one's um, showing up. You're on mute, Mr. Long. Yeah, I, no one is. No one has identified themselves as wanting to speak, Madam Chair. Okay, so um, I will express two concerns. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't have a problem with the physical uh, configuration. I have a more basic problem which are two things. And part of this came from spending more time looking at use variances um, and area variances. Right now they have a non-conforming use, which means it's a non-permitted use in a portion of the property. So by expanding a non-conforming use, they are arguably uh, putting in a use, i.e. increasing the size of the, of the second family, whatever the second, whichever one is, um, and, and, um, and increasing the size of the second family, which is not a permitted use any second family. So question whether in fact it is. And the second thing is I wanna read from you from 342-2 of the Village Code's legislative intent to bring about the gradual conformity of the uses and buildings throughout the village to the chapter as set forth in and to minimize conflicts among the uses of land and building. We are essentially permitting this two family house to be made much more viable, understandably. I mean, as a small unit, uh, understandably why you need to do it. But to me, this raises significant issues for the village. If we are going to allow non-conforming two-family and single-family district to expand by this amount. So um, those are my... Uh, you know, Robin, and that, well, that's one of the points I was gonna bring up. Um, one point I have, uh, one question I have for the architect, there will be absolutely no ingress or egress from outdoors to that second floor. Is that correct? Oh. It will only be internal to the property. Only oh, internal. Oh, correct. There's a, uh, there's a new proposed internal staircase from the first floor to the second floor. There is no physical way that it could it's be separated. Okay. So there is no means of egress to exit the building well, from the new construction, wait a minute, from the new construction area, is that correct? Correct, other than jumping out the code compliant windows. Okay, and Robin, to your point, 34264B, a non-conforming use of a building shall not be changed to another non-conforming use except where approval by the Board of Appeals after finding that the change will be to a lesser non-conforming use and one that will be more harmonious with the surrounding area. I think that I think that was the intent of what you read in 34, uh, I'm sorry, 342 too. Um, if you look at A of that section, a building instruction the use of which does not conform to the use regulations for the district in which it is situated shall not be altered, enlarged, or extended unless the use therein changes to a conforming use. Notwithstanding, the above board of appeals after public notice and hearing may grant a special permit to allow a non-conforming use to be extended throughout those parts of the building which were manifestly arranged or designed for such use prior to the time of enactment of this chapter provision that made the use non-conforming and provided that no structural alterations other than those required for health or safety are made therein. Any other alteration, enlargement, or new construction shall require a variance to be granted by the Board of Appeals. So in effect, we would have to grant a variance if we're willing to accept what's going on. Right. And, they've, and they've applied for a variance. Right. The question is, the point is they've applied for an area variance, and I was raising the issue of is an area variance since the, the code doesn't say the appropriate variance. Um, I think, oh, I'm sorry, Doug, you're not done. No, okay. no, go, uh, no, yeah, no. The reason why I'm saying is a non-conforming use cannot be changed to another non-conforming use. That's one part. And then it says a building or structure, the use of which does not conform to use regulations for the district in which you say, shall, you know, I mean, it goes on. And I see the point you're making about use. Can, can ahead, I Meg. Well, use is one family dwelling. It's a one family dwelling, that's the use. They are not creating a space for two different families. 
they're enlarging the number of rooms they're one family dwelling. I don't see how this is a change of use. Right. They're increasing the size, and so they have pro appropriately come to us for a variance because as it is a um, permitted non-conforming, they need to do that, and we need to consider any kind of uh, dimensional variances and how it impacts. Right. But I have, it has nothing to do with a change of use. It's a one family dwelling and that is the use. They're just simply adding some bedrooms and a, in a the, They're not changing the use. Absolutely agree, that's not the issue here. The issue is they have a non-conforming use. The non-conforming use of the building is a two family district. The code is very clear that you're supposed to, that it wants to everybody to be in conformity. Um, the goal is not to allow non-conforming uses, which is a two family. You can't say, well, this is one family. They're only expanding one piece of it, so it doesn't count. No, the building is a two family use. And and others, uh, any other alteration. So it is not an ex, it is an ex enlargement of a non-conforming use. Mm -hmm. And we are allowing the non-conforming use to be put on a portion of the property. Now, the argument, the other argument, I mean, I, I haven't figured, I haven't 100% come to the conclusion. I mean, the other argument might be is they're not taking up more of the land, mm -hmm. right? They're just building on top of an existing non-conforming piece. But, um, but they are, enlarging a non-conforming use, i.e. they are enlarging a two-family house in a single-family district. They're increasing the FAR, and however you want to look at, at, at enlargement, increasing the FAR is clearly an enlargement. I think the code isn't clear as to whether it needs a use or area variance, but a non-conforming use talks about the use of the property. I read the code and all, all the things we're asking in terms of the numbers, the FAR and the, the side lot are all clearly area variances. And when I, when I read the code that, that you just cited, it's, it refers to use, but I believe the application to the town and to the municipality is for, that's also an area variance based in words and not numbers. It's, it's asking this board to allow permission of the increase in square footage or whatever the other variances are, referencing the use, like you're correct, you know, as Doug mentioned, we're not changing the use as Meg said, but um, the, the, that last variance is an administrative area variance and I've done it in, uh, in other similar towns as well. It's asking this board who has, the, it's the right purview and the right appropriate board to grant the permission of, it's another, Area, it's not a use variance, it's not a change of use, and it's not a use variance, even because the size of the non-conforming use is getting larger. It's more like an administrative area variance for all the other ones. And, and if, I, if I could say something for one second, um, just to, to give a little background, you know, we've, my daughter's going into ninth grade. She's been here since kindergarten. Uh, we're trying to stay in the neighborhood. You know, when we first uh, bought this house, we were a family of three. Now we're a family of five. And at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is, um, you know, make the space, uh, you know, more, more comfortable for our family. Where we have one bathroom, we're trying to make it two. Where we have two bedrooms, we're, we're trying to make it four. And where, you know, we, we don't really have a design area to, to work from home for my wife and for both of us actually who work from home, we're just trying to, to create that space. Anytime you're trying to go for a variance, um, there's a code that's already in place that, that's a rule that we're trying to, to, to alter for this unique situation. And um, I believe this is a unique situation that um, hopefully you guys feel it in your hearts to, to provide to us. You know, that's all we're trying to do is stay in a good neighborhood um, for, our, for our children, um, for good schools. That's what we moved here for. And uh, we're just trying to, you know, stay here in the neighborhood and to improve the, the house, not only on the inside, but on the outside as well. So, um, you know, hopefully that, that makes sense. Yeah. Robin? 342-64A. It, it's, it's actually the last paragraph. It's the last uh, sentence uh, of that. Right. But it doesn't say what kind of variants. It just says. No, it doesn't. Variant. It doesn't. But, That's why you're saying I don't know. Just I, raise I, I think it just right. came up with me as I was looking at it, the use and, area. And Robin, I think we could consider as a board, you're right, that it's not supposed to be changing, you know, it, that, that the intent is to bring things into conformity. And yet that option for us to find and give a variance to enlarge is there. 
So there, you know, it does say we have the option. So it is before us that we could decide. I right. don't think that by not denying this, we have any greater chance that this home will become a two, a single family. Even right. if, if, I'm sorry, even if this family now cannot stay and needs to go find some place with more bedrooms, I don't think that the house will be converted to a single family. I don't think that we would be getting any closer to bringing a two family into conformity for one family by denying this, but I would consider that. But I don't think that this is the only reason, the only way it would stay as a two family. It's, it's been a two family for decades. And um, so, and I think it's within the purview of this board to consider uh, the enlargement. And mm -hmm. um, so I don't have a problem with the enlargement. I mean, we could talk about the FAR and the impact. Um, I've looked at the house and I've thought about it. Um, I don't find it that it's, um, I think the, the benefit for the applicants outweigh the, any impact that it would have in the neighborhood. I think the way it's tucked in the back, it doesn't make that much difference. Um, I don't think they need a variance for the two cars because I believe that's the way it's been since uh, prior to the code changing in the, in the 1960s. So that's also grandfathered it. You know, Meg, I, I don't disagree with what you said, okay? Um, Seriously, I don't. And I think, Robin, that there is, as long as, can you, Bob, Mr. Schloman, can you put your floor plan up again of the second floor? I think you have to allow me to do it. Yeah, go ahead, I just did, go ahead. Okay. Uh... Okay. That, you know, and the biggest issue and the question that I actually had, Robin, was as long as there are no means of egress out of that second floor area directly to the street in a private, its own private entrance, okay? Yeah. Um, that was my concern. And there is none. As Mr. Sloman said, somebody would have to jump out of a legally sized window for ingress, egress to get down to the street. Right. And, you know, and that was my concern. Other than that, I really don't have an issue with it because um, it is limited. The space that they have is limited. I can see what they're doing. Your family's expanding and they need the space. And I can understand that COVID-19 uh, is keeping everybody home right now. And but I can see your point as well. And it doesn't say whether it's a use or an area variance. And I understand that as well. I don't, again, as I said, I wasn't sure I just raised that. But I will say that since I've been on the board, there have been many applications to modernize a house. While I support the applicant's goal of staying in the village, and I think that's great, I would be very happy to have them stay. To me, um, this is a concern. I don't want to give... We, I, I, we, I've been on the board and we have denied multiple applications for people doing things like this. M a significant modernization, significant whatever. Um, I can't say every time it's happened. And to me, the, um, the fact that what we're doing is what we're saying is essentially, yeah, you have a non-conforming use and we're gonna let you st m m m allow for it to stay forever, notwithstanding that's not what the code wants. So from my view, that is my only issue Nothing else. Does anybody else on the board have anything uh, they want to say about this? And if there's no, then we can close the application tonight. Um, yeah, I, ha I have a couple things. Um, a, a question for the applicants. To what degree did you consider you have, you have, um, you need more space? You have a growing family. To what degree did you consider taking that other space, that other family unit and trying to make a one family home? Yeah, I mean, we, we considered that too. Um, you know, obviously Westchester, when, when you're, you're counting your pennies here and you're talking about taxes, you're talking about the income that is provided um, from that second floor. Uh, you also have a family that's been here with us since we bought the property. And they actually grew up in, she grew up in America. Right, right. <laughs> so, 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 you know, we're, we're thinking about not just ourselves, but we're thinking about them as well. And and considering, um, you know, them, they're, they're good tenants, they're good people, they have a young son, and, um, you know. She it, works in the neighborhood. Yeah, she works in the neighborhood um, as well. So, you know, we, you know, we thought about that, but, you know, putting somebody else 
somebody on the street that's playing pretty reasonable rent and is, is helping us out at the end of the day and, and helping us stay in a neighborhood where the taxes are pretty, pretty high. Um, you know, we considered all of those things. So we feel like this was probably better um, as opposed to, you know, maybe putting somebody on the street and, and doing it that way. So, so I guess if I were to, is it correct for me to, to um, come to the conclusion that you could do it? You could um, achieve your goals in, ex, you know, getting more space for your home, except you determined that um, economically it would be more beneficial to have the extra rental income and you have a personal relationship with the people you're renting it to and you, you're happy with the current arrangement. But that you could, it is economically feasible that you could change it into a one family bedroom. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something you could potentially do. Um, but again, for the reasons why, that I mentioned, um, again, the relationship with the folks upstairs and, and trying to, you know, again, help others and any additional income, obviously, is, is not something that's, that's hurting us at the end of the day. Um, we felt like this was a better option than the other way. Did you explore the option of converting it back, Greta? This is to your point. Did you explore the option with, uh, with the assessor's office? of converting your, your uh, house back to a single family unit at, at, and evaluate the tap, have them evaluate the tax implications based on that. Because obviously you had the second floor in, they're gonna come and do a complete reassessment of your property. So the question comes out, is it, have you asked the uh, assessor's office, both in the town and the village, as to if you converted your house back to a one family and modified it so that your family sat in it, where would that put you as far as taxes are concerned? I did, not go, to the, I did not go to the assessor's office, no. Yeah, obviously it would drop you down uh, to a one family uh, classification. No, I didn't go to the assessor's office. Yeah. Okay. And I also have a question about the um, substantiality of the variance requested with respect to the FAR. Um, you know, in the, in the um, papers, you know, the assertion is made is that the, the variance is not substantial, but with respect to the FAR, in fact, it is substantial. It's, I think, 18.75%, um, which um, case law indicates it, is a substantial variance. So um, given that it is over 15%, um, and so it meets the, the definition of a substantial <laughs> variance, what due diligence has been done to see what other um, houses in the immediate vicinity also may have a similar, you know, FAR? So one can assess whether that FAR is consistent with the neighborhood or whether it's actually really very much exceeds what's in the vicinity. Well, I, I think the numbers, the square footage was dictated by the existing construction. Um, I, I don't think we have other cases for other variances in the neighborhood with similar overage on FAR. And, and I, I, did, I don't have any records of that, uh, nor, nor did I get any. I think if, you know, I understand you're looking at the words of the, of the law, but I, I think if we look at the big picture of the intent and also we look at the New York State, the five questions in terms of um, effect on the neighborhood, effect on the house, effect financially, effect on the environment. If we look at the three letters in support, I think if there was one letter in opposition, I think we'd be weighing it for a long time. The three letters in support, whether they're neighbors or friends or they know them for a long time, they, they truly are in support. Nobody's going to take the time to write a letter. So I, I think people, you know, even if they live across the street and they're friends, if they really felt it had a negative impact on the neighborhood, they wouldn't write a letter of support. So I, I think everybody needs to look at the big picture, today's situation, the family that's there, the finances. If you look at the overall, I think it's a really well-intended project. It's not 
egregious in any way in terms of what it's asking for, whether it's 18.5% or 15%. I, I understand the technicality, um, you know, where, while the other variance is probably 0.05%. Um, so I, I just think if you look at the big picture, I think, as one of the board members said, I think the positives highly outweigh any sort of negative. I don't think there are any negatives other than the interpretation of the wording of, of the code. Yeah, no, okay, no. so then I'll, I'll take that to mean that because I did, you know, I did stop by the property and I looked at the other areas and it was, you know, obviously I didn't measure the FAR and the other building, but it did look like that um, this project would be, um, would be, be a larger FAR than the surrounding area. So is that something you would, you would agree with? I, I don't know the other lot sizes. It's hard for me to just say that just by observing. I don't know, you know, some of them have taller houses with dormers. I, 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 it's hard for me to say without the numbers. So. Without doubt, you need the numbers and, you know, we don't have but, the numbers. But I, I think just, you know, just lo looking at the design and looking at the bulk of the house onto, on the lot of the house, I don't think it's out of scale. Yeah, and then we have one of the smaller lots too. So doesn't that affect the FAR percentage, right? Without, so, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, some of the other houses um, have l larger lots. So you know, it's 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 really hard to, to gauge versus where we are. We have one of the smaller lots because we have the corner too. Um, but I would say those those three letters of support. We didn't solicit those. We didn't go to our neighbors and say, "Hey, could you provide letters?" When they got the letter in the mail saying that we were going for the variances, they volunteered and walked up to us and provided those letters. The two on Jefferson are directly across the street. So that's what they, when they come out of their front door, that's what they're looking at every single day. And I'm um, actually, we're three on Jefferson. The other one that was on Jefferson is, is our direct neighbor. So that's their side yard that we're talking about that, that's um, right by the edge of those bedrooms. So these are people that would be directly affected by this particular uh, variance and, and the work being done here. And they volunteered in order to, to write those letters. Uh, you have a uh, floor planner, the first floor. Can you put that up? Uh, is it part of this? Let's see if it's in. I don't think you put it in there. Uh, I don't know. If it, I, let me see if I can pull it up if you. Yeah, it, immediately underneath that specific, particular space is a bathroom, two bedrooms, and part of the kitchen just to give you an idea. When I looked at this, at the, at the, the site, I actually thought that the site, the enlargement was not, the, 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 you know, the height was not inconsistent, particularly with what's on um, Lorraine Street. Those are big buildings, bigger buildings on Lorraine Street, mm -hmm. um, right? Or maybe I'm on Jefferson, I'm one of the streets. I, I, I think Jefferson I, is what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, Jefferson Street, I thought it was actually consistent. I don't know what the FARs of any of them are. So I was less troubled um, by that. I'm much more troubled by the basic principle, as I said. Um, and if you can see that, I have the plan up in this format, if you can see it. I don't think, we, do we see it? Are you able to I, see this? No. no. No, not yet. Sid. You have to unshare for a moment and then bring up your other screen and then share it again. Okay. Mm. That's weird. Um, for some reason, none of the buttons are working. Can you unshare and then try to share a different screen? I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. Okay. All right, try it now. You see that? Okay, got it. Okay. So this is the existing first floor. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the kitchen and here are the new stairs, internal staircase going up. So there's an existing bedroom, bedroom, dining room, living room, and there's a front entrance and front porch on the right and the side entrance here. So where, where is the, the current tenant? Above the current tenant comes in the front door, 
go straight up the stairs and they are in the front half of the house by the front door, the right side in this plan, above the living room and dining room and kitchen. That half of the house is uh, two, so they have this, the second floor and above that on the right side. Okay, all right. All right. So, and then where you see on the left here, where the stairs are, bathroom, bedroom, bedroom, the left side, that's one story only. So that's where we're going above. And you can see the proposed new staircase here on the bottom left. Right. Are you, ex are you expanding the size of the ground floor single fam? I mean, I know it wasn't ground floor now, but the other unit in your uh, building, are you expanding their size as well? No. Okay. No, they're, they're staying the same. Uh, and the applicant's first floor is staying the same. Uh, they'll lose a little space for the fitting in of the staircase. And then it's basically the addition on top of the back half. So the first floor for everybody is staying the same. The tenant is staying exactly the same. All right, Sid, let me ask you a question. You're showing on that first floor plan, I see steps going down and a doorway entering. Correct. That is what entrance? That's the existing side entrance of the house. Let me see if I can uh, get this back up here. Uh, about the one that goes into the kitchen? The one that goes into the kitchen. You can see, can you see the rendering again? No, I am no, you have to undo what you've shown. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so because I see the kitchen. So on the first floor, stay right here for a second. Okay. On the first floor, you have a kitchen, dining room, living room. There's a porch out. It's a porch office that's enclosed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you have a means of the tenant comes in on the bottom right and goes up and their space is over the dining room, living room and kitchen. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, let's go to the other side. What's on the first what's on the first floor on the other side? Uh, you have two bedrooms, a bathroom, right? Correct. And, and that's it. And right now the kitchen is kind of a galley where you see the refrigerator is above the proposed stairs. So that whole rectangle now is kitchen and eat-in kitchen, let's call it. So okay. we took some space from that kitchen in order to fit the staircase going up to the second floor. Okay, now, so you're saying right now, you have an entrance that enters into the space by the kitchen. Correct. Right. Yes. So the the apartment has two entries. The main both, both on the first floor. This side entrance, right. which is existing, is right by the two car parking spaces. Okay. The and curtain. then there's another door on the other side. They're both on the first floor. There's no separation. It's all into the same apartment. Right. So when you enter into that side entrance, you're literally going to be walking underneath the stairs to go up to the second floor? You walk to the to the bottom of the first step. If you make an immediate left, you would go upstairs, and it's an open staircase, open railings, no doors. It's an internal staircase from the kitchen area to the second floor. So you can access the second floor from the outside. No, you can't. No, you can't. You. Sh no, the the stairwell's inside. That's you're coming in the door and then going to the left going up it's not exterior it's not i think what but that's so i think the question is if you if i'm understanding doug correctly could you separate in other words you walk in through the entrance door here if you proceeded straight instead of making a left could you do that yes yes okay so that means in theory you could separate the stairs to the upstairs because one person could live in 
the, the area in front of you and one person. Is that what you're asking, Doc? Uh, are, are you, uh, are you yeah. seeing if, if a third unit can be created? Is that what you're saying? saying? Robert, what I'm okay. saying is... is that, I, I thought that was what Doug was asking. I don't yes, know. I'm not that, raising that's that. A, that's exactly what I'm asking. Right. Because well, I'm, you don't have a kitchen. There, there, there's, no, there's, there's no kitchen. There's no intent to do that. Do you know how many homes that could it be in? We can't tell people just because you walk in and you happen to have your stairs to go upstairs that oh now we're not we're we're afraid you're going to turn it into a two family. You have to trust them that they are going to do what right, they right well right now I I need to make an informed decision so I need all the information to make that decision. I'm not saying you can't and I'm not saying you can. I'm just saying I need to understand fully if I. Well, any, any, any one family home, any one family home with the proper construction, with walls, doors, stairs, kitchen, can be transformed into a two family, into a three family, into a four family. If you're willing to take the time and money and energy to build the walls and modify the structure, of anything can be modified. What I would say is that there's no kitchen. So even if you block that off, and they go directly upstairs from that entrance, they're still going to two bedrooms, a bathroom, an office, but no kitchen. So, you know, cause there's still only two kitchens in the entire home and you'd, you'd have to create that somehow. And you know, that, that's all I'm yeah. saying. I guess that's Do all me a favor, thing. Shane, put the, put the second floor up, please. Uh, if you can unshare, then I'll reshare, please. Okay. Okay, uh, that is, let me go back to this one. Here you go. So these are the stairs that go down to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. so, so you come up, you end up at a landing, you make a left, there's an office, a right, there's a bathroom, straight ahead are two bedroom. That's it, there's, there's nothing. No, nothing, nothing sneaky going on. Nothing that can be done to modify it. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, it, any unauthorized construction can be done to any home. This we're actually asking for authorization. No, I, I understand, Sid. I'm just, mm -hmm. get you. I'm just yeah. making sure I have all the information I need. Okay. I'm not giving up that bathroom to anybody. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we need two bathrooms, my friend. We, we got five people on this floor, man. We're not trying um, to give that up for anybody. I, I wouldn't do that to a bathroom. <laughs> oh, since I have this screen, I'll just show you the rendering of the side entrance. Just so it's clear. So, right there. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sid. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone else on the board have any questions? Um, I have a couple, well, one more question for the applicant. And that is um, last meeting, I requested the corner lot designation. Um, did you uh, prepare a corner lot designation and submit it to the building department? We designated the two front yards and the two rear yards, hence, the elimination of the variance from last week. So we did designate which were the two front yards and which were the two rear yards. Okay, so you did provide some type of written notice to the building department? We modified the site plan. We modified the site plan and you can see here it says 20 foot front setback, 20 foot front, eight foot side, six foot side. So there's no rear. So it was properly designated with the proper side yard setbacks, as opposed to the previous application, which showed a rear yard setback, which would have required a greater variance, which is no longer necessary since it was clarified. 
Um, okay. Um, I don't know, Greta, do you have more questions? Okay, so I, I guess just a clarification. You put your written designation in the plan, which you then submitted with the building department. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Greta, anything else? Um, for the applicants, no. Okay, so the next question we have, since no one else on the board seems to have questions, and um, we haven't heard nobody from the public has, has, has right, still nobody from the public, right? Um, it is one person from the public, Madam Chair. Now please uh, let them speak. Good evening, board members. Glenn Tippett, 506 Hill Street. Uh, a couple of points. Uh, number one, Doug uh, brought up the um, uh, difference uh, if making it a, a single family house that you might have significant savings in taxes. Understand that might not happen for the simple fact that we've had huge home inflation in this area. I just had a home uh, next to me that was valued at $500,000 in 2015, just go for 649,000. If they actually went and valued the house at what the houses sell in the neighborhood now, there may not be any savings at all for that option. Number two, the Board of Trustees has continually pushed for the fact that they want economic diversity in this village, that they want to keep the working middle class in this village. And the only way that you're going to do that is to allow these people to be able to modify their home to fit their new family needs, or else basically what you're doing is you're chasing another person out of the village, maybe even their tenants, to have somebody come in, they'll pay more money for it and everything, and we'll just become a village of millionaires. If you want diversity in the village, the people who live in the village, who pay their taxes, who are good people, who have been here forever, have to be able to modify their house within reason to fit their family needs. And Ryan Taylor, your wife, I wish you the absolute best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Glenn. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, anyone else, Will? No. Okay. Um, so board members, um, Greta, this is mostly for you, I think, because you were the ones who raised them. Is, is there any additional information that you need? That's why I'm saying you, just because I think you were the one who raised some questions about additional information. So is there anything else you would like the applicant to provide? You're on mute. Greta, you're on mute. Um, I don't have, I don't think I, I um, request any more information from the applicant. It's more, um, I guess one thing that's kind of a curiosity is, Robin, you referenced the fact that in your experience, there have been other applications um, analogous to this one that have been turned down by the board. And I'm wondering whether there's any way we can um, look at some of these applications and look at the reasoning and see if they're relevant to the case at hand from a presidential. I, I don't think there's a way to, uh, we, we, you know, the, our, our, our computer analysis, I don't think there's a way 
to like look up a particular issue, like to search 342.64 and see all applications that were filed under 342.64 to see what the board has done. I said the board, I, the board has not always turned them down. Certainly more recently, the few I remember, I don't remember some of them were being so big, but in some cases they haven't turned it down. Um, I just don't remember any being as big as this one. So you asked if there's anything comparable. In my experience, I don't remember anything being as big as this, although early on in my uh, tenure on the board, there was somebody who had a, maybe a three family um, or, two, or two separate buildings and they wanted to expand one of the buildings to add something else. I just don't remember enough of the facts. So I don't know that we can find out the answer to your question. So if nobody wants any additional information, then is everybody ready to close the application? I am. All right, everybody else? Nobody want to make a motion to close? I make a motion we close the application. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Um, Doug? Yes. Greta? Yes. Meg? Meg? Oh, I said yes. Oh, and Abby? Yes. And I'm okay with closing as well, so this is closed. We may or may not um, make any decision tonight. We may or may not discuss it in terms of a resolution, a draft resolution. I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet. So, uh, but the, there's no, no public hearing is closed. So okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank your you, time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next application is 37 SP 2018, Anthony Russo for Parkview Station, Modern on the Rails at One Station Plaza. So the applicant is here for an extension of his, the portion of his special permit, or maybe it's a, an, a, an additional amendment of the special permit to extend, to renew the outdoor use, uh, the, you know, the seating on the outside of the property and because they didn't file timely, we first need to decide that they can, that we're okay with submitting a late application to file. So um, does, is the applicant here? Looks like the applicant is here, does? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you can go ahead, applicant. Please. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were just asking if I was here. No, no. If you're um, here, we're, that, I just opened it. Now we have a public hearing. So you okay. Can. So, so um, the last time I was here uh, a month or so ago, it was for the extension um, to submit my application, and I, my application is extended. Um, I I was approved for my special permit in in my my second special permit and with the caveat that I was having a probation for my um, outdoor dining for one year. And, uh, you know, I, I had missed the deadline to file, but then you, you allowed me to uh, file it. And now I'm, I'm here to um, get it extended now. So it matches, I guess, the, the special permit, which is for three years. So when was the special permit granted and when, just because I don't have it in front of me, when was it granted? So when, how much more time is there left on the underlying special permit? I mean, it's going to, on the underlying special permit, the three-year uh, yeah. permit? Yeah, I, I don't remember when it was granted, that's all. Cause. So I, mm, the original one, I don't know that I, I, I know I, I will have to renew, we're in year five of business, so it's every three years, so I will have to renew next year. Okay. Um, Okay, so are there any, so there were no changes, as I recall, there are no changes to you, the way you want to operate. In terms of outdoor dining, no, that the changes were done uh, in the beginning of that special permit, that's why right, it no. was probation. Yeah, no, no, I mean in terms of t hours or anything like that. No, there's no change in hours. Um, I, you know, right in the beginning, um, when, when we changed all the hours and all of that, there was, there was a, uh, 
a stipulation about music and, you know, I would like to ask to be able to have some background music, no live music or anything like that, just for the diners on the patio. I mean, at this, you know, we're almost done with this year, but, you know, for next year, I guess. Some light background music. Um, we, we've got a couple of, I see there were a couple of violations issued, not necessarily for the outside, but for the restaurant itself in June and in, I don't know when the other one was issued. Uh, there was an older one in 2017, but you've had some, the only recent one, I think was this new one in 2020. I don't know why it says 2017. I'm a little confused. I, I don't believe we had any violations since 2017. Okay, so then the date on here is just the date when this was submitted to the board members, not the date of the violation. I was confused on that. Okay, so you have no new violations. Um, anybody, uh, uh, okay, so sorry, is there anybody from the public, sorry, before we take the rest of the board, I just wanted to make that, uh, do that. Anybody from the public wishes to speak on this application? I'm sorry? I don't think anybody wants to speak. Okay, so does anybody else on the board wish to ask questions or speak on yes. this application? Uh, I'd like a definition of background music. Um, so inside we play overhead music, you know, to drown out the clanging forks and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we'd like the ability to do that on the outside. We haven't had that ability. And we've, you know, on our last um, special permit, we were told we had to keep, keep all the windows closed and all of that, which we do anyway because of air conditioning and, and whatnot. But, I mean, I just think it would be nice for the diners to have a little background music. And I, I think after, you know, like I said, we're in our fifth year of business. Um, I'm pretty sure Mamaronic knows what we are about, you know, we're a family neighborhood restaurant and, uh, you know, we just want to operate as such. Um, I'm, uh, I would say that I'm definitely opposed to allowing any music outside. It affects people using the park nearby. It affects homes nearby. That they, let me, uh, that they all need to hear the same music. Really hard to regulate what is background music, what is low music. I know when you're playing music on a cement surface, it's just going to travel. Also, if you are going to ask for that, I think that that should have been written down so that the public was aware that you were making this request. Myself, um, mm -hmm. if I wasn't um, aware for the public and your neighbor to understand that you were asking for music, I would, so, but I, I, I regardless, I, I would oppose any music outside, but I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know, uh, renewing your ability to serve outside in the same um, time. I, I remember that, and correct me if I'm wrong, there were a number of complaints for noise from music coming from modern on the rails from neighbors. I think that's right, they were originally, but I think the point was that, that you know, they haven't, not recently, there's been know, no violations issued recently. Yeah, but they haven't, they, they're not playing music outdoor right. as it is. So, you know, um, one, I think if they were, wanted to do that, they needed to put it into their application. So I don't think we should entertain that at all because it's not part of their application. Okay, very well. We can, you know, address that in, in a future um, uh, special permit. And, uh, you know, okay, I, I understand. Greta or Abby, any questions, anything you want to say before we, or Meg, I guess, anything else? No. I'm satisfied because I don't see any, any complaints and we don't have anybody from the public coming to say that there is, is some disruption with uh, the serving outside. Okay, well, if nobody, uh, for, nobody has any questions and there's nobody from the public who showed up, then um, I think we should close this application unless anyone disagrees. I agree. All right, so I'll make a motion to close the uh, public hearing. I'll second. Greta? Yes. Doug? Yes. Abby? Yes. 
Meg. Yes. And I vote that as I vote yes as well. So the public hearing is closed. Um, we may or may not get to discuss the application tonight. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, the next application is application 2SP 2017, uh, renewal of the special permit, Mukahi Heat uh, for the Roaster Cafe, 419 Mamaroneck Avenue. And they also need, um, since they did not file timely, they also need approval of a right to extend the time to file. So is the applicant myself. here? Robin, I have to recuse myself from this application. Okay. Is the applicant here? Okay. Right, if the applicant, you can. If you could unmute. Mr. Arici, you could, yeah. All right. Hello there, guys. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, okay. I was just making sure. All right. I had. To, hello there, everybody. Just uh, so I have two applications, and actually for today, for tonight. We're only hearing this application, the one on the roaster. We're not hearing the other application, so we're not ready to discuss. Okay. Um, so we need to do it separately. I got okay. you. All right, that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was, I didn't, I wasn't able to do, file it in at, on the on the time. So, um, but I was able to get all the paperwork dropped off, and uh, I mean, I really don't have any much to say for this application because it's already an establishment business. I so, I mean, that's. Pretty much just it. just confirming there have been no violations. There has been violations, but it was uh, addressed. Okay, what was the sorry? What was the violation for? It's probably in here, but I don't have it open in front of me. So, what was the violation for? Um, it was. It was a, I, one of them was a oh, I see. There's a, sandwich, uh, board, sandwich board out, signed on the sidewalk cafe. So one was for a sign and one was for some kind of operation without a permit, construction yes. without a permit. Correct. Okay. Uh, is there anybody from the board who wishes to speak on this application? Uh, not from the board, I'm sorry. From the public who wishes to speak on this application? Either piece, the extension of time to file or the um, renewal of the special permit itself. Okay, anybody on the board who wishes to uh, discuss this, ask questions? Hey, I've gone to the uh, materials that are online for the agenda and it, it doesn't have anything about the um, um, it only seems to have one letter asking for the extension there. Um, just doesn't seem correct that if, I guess we received it as a Google Doc or something, maybe the board received some more information, but the public hasn't received that, isn't act, doesn't have access to it if it's not on the agenda. I don't know that, um, I don't know the answer to that, um, Will, if you would, but it's on the agenda. It says to entertain the applicant's request for an extension of time to file. So the public does know that there is an application. For an absolutely, absolutely. You just refer, I, because I like to go there, all the records are compiled there. So I'm looking there for the violations that you talked about and they're not there. I see um, a violation. I'm sorry. I see, did I do something wrong going to the agenda? I went to the agenda. I don't look at the agenda. I look at the agenda as it was circulated to the board with all the attached documents. The board got materials that the public did not. I don't know. I, I'm not looking at what the, what was online. It's just, it's just what I'm looking at. At the agenda that the public looks at, and I open up the application, and I only see one letter there. So I wanted to point that out. That it seems that the materials that we are considering that was not posted as part of the public. Um, I think that, so I think um, 
uh, will go. So that means that the village has to be more. Um, Oh, is the application, Meg, I'm sorry, is the application there? Just the application for the no, renewal? I only, see, I only see a letter. And so apologies if I'm not going to the right place. I went to the agenda for tonight. I click on this application and I get um, a, I open it up and all I get is an email that was sent to Betty at, and asking for this extension, a letter to the voting board. So the, so the application itself for the renewal, you're saying is not there. Okay, I don't have that. So um that may be something we have to um deal with in the village it may be um will do you know what was posted do you know if that was posted the application no, 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 no. We, we can't hear you sorry your internet is a little odd there's a sound issue Um, whoever just said something, I couldn't hear that. That was also. So, Will, what did you say that we couldn't understand? Does, does, can you try again? Yeah, when I, so I went to my Google Drive where I received it as a board member and I see the application and I also see this letter. But when I went to the public materials that are posted, I only saw the letter, not the application. Okay. So as I say, that may be a problem that we have, that, that the village has to deal with and fix that. Uh -huh. oh. Will? I just wondered whether, I mean, you know, we can opine on this when the public gets all of the information. Um, Mike, I mean, yeah, I, to me, this is... I had to call him via phone. So um, I guess the agenda was uh, was set up before. Um, I didn't set the agenda up, and I didn't attach the uh, the attachment. It was done before. Um, I guess Betty Ann left. Uh, so if the board doesn't mind, I will look into this tomorrow and make sure that all information is posted. Okay, but so uh, and, and so. Um, Mike, this is really a legal question for you. If the if we are discussing an application where the application itself was not made available to the public, uh, do we need to continue the hearing in order for it? To, yes. So the answer is yes. So we can't we can't close the hearing tonight, but we can finish discussing it amongst us and then just adjourn the hearing for next time in case anyone from the public wishes to speak. Okay, so um, anybody else from the um, board have any questions for the applicant? Uh, I have just one clarification question about complaints. It looks like the only complaint or incident um, in the package we received was a incident in 1975, so I'm, really, I'm not concerned about it at all. Is there a additional complaint that the applicant just discussed that's not in the written material? I didn't look at the date of that. It's 1975. So Mr. Arici, is there one? There is, there's no complaint. Um, Freda, are you sure? It says at the top it's for um, renewal of special permit 2017. But when I go to the bottom of that, it says 8-13-2020 on that. The violation, no, it, it took me a minute because I, I screwed it. I was wrong on the last one. It's, um, it says noise complaint dated 2020. Um, but that may be the date that it was reported. But this violation, if you look at the violation itself, it says incident report 
And there's a date, 5 6 1975, um, on the right side of that village code, you know, where it says village code violation. So I'm looking at one that says noise complaint from the police department. Correct. But if you go to the, then it says attached. And if you go to the violation, noise complaint 2020, yeah, this is not, so the, what was attached is 2019, but it's got the same 929 date. He said he sent it in about the 1970 something complaint. He sent it in on 8-13-2020. Right, but, but what, what that says, what, what this email says is, from the police department, says noise complaint IR, so I guess that must be the number, 2020-02-09290. I get it. It's just, it's just that the date, the first one that says that it was a noise complaint, the police department put the 8-13-2020, but now I see the attachment is for a, a much older incident. I get it. The date on the transmittal letter from the police department to Betty Ann with this old incident. Yeah, that's not what I'm looking at. I was looking at the fact that it says noise complaint IR 2020-929, but the complaint itself says incident number 2019-929-2020. So um, they are slightly different. It might just be an error from the police department. And the, yeah. So perhaps we can get clarification because this, um, there might be just, maybe get some clarification on exactly what, what the um, complaint is. Because this is, this is a 45 year old complaint. Right. And that is the, the restaurant isn't 45 years old, is that right? No. no. I don't think it's a 45 year old, why do you think it's a 45 year old complaint? Because it says 1975. Is that about the caller? I think that's about the caller. Well, the, that's when the violation would have been issued. But I thought the incident has, it has 2019 at the top of the incident report. Correct. We don't know what that means. I think the bottom line is here, we need to understand what this means. And so that when we look at these in the future, since there's a lot of confusion about dates, we need to find out from the police department. Um, or, Will, if you know the answer to that. Or, Frank, if you know the answer to that. Um, we need to find out exactly what this, um, was it a 1975 violation? Was, why is one thing dated 2019, something else is dated 2020? Uh, and, you know, just not clear. So if, if either Frank or Will, if either of you has, knows the answer to this, Otherwise, we probably want to get clarification from the police department. And just so that also for the future, because again, I had the same issue with um, the prior application on Modern on the Rails, there was some dis you know, confusion about the violations. So. I don't have the answer to that, but I'd like the, the violations to be sent to the building department also in the package. We should be getting the same package that the planning board gets. <clears throat> ZBA. In this case, uh, ZBA. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So um, I think that's so. From the I think that's a good thought. It's a good. It's a good comment, and I think we have to make sure that we do that. Uh, that the village does that in the future. I'm not sure how. So I guess will when you ask the police department for um, violations on an application, and they submit it, and you circulate it to the public and to the board, you should also make sure you send them, please, to the building department, I think is what we're, what makes sense. Um, okay, so board members. So my question is, do you, we have two, three, we have a couple choices tonight, really. Do we wanna close the application and just wait for clarification? Cause it looks like it's a 1975 violation. And I, my guess is that it, you know, it's what looks like what it was. Or do you want to keep it open in order to get clarification from the police department? I thought we had to keep it open because the, the public didn't have the application. Oh, right. I forgot. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you, Meg. I, I forgot that. Correct. So we will ask, we will, before the next hearing, we will find out, we'll get a clarification on the violation as well. Um, 
No one else has anything? Anybody else? Did, Greta, did you say you had a couple of questions or comments? Was there anything else? No, no, I have nothing more. All right, so why, let's adjourn the application for the next meeting um, and uh, the public hearing. We'll adjourn the public hearing for the next meeting at which, by which time we will um, have a clarification of the violation. And any other violations. All right, the next public hearing is 11 SP 2020, um, uh, Barkila, 308 Mamaronek Avenue for a special permit. Uh, the applicant was here, is still here, so. Okay. Applicant? Yep. If you want to speak or discuss this application. Yes, so like I mentioned, so we are, I'm the owner, I'm one of the owners for the Roaster Cafe on uh, Mamaronek Ave. We've been at the current location for past three years now. I'm very proud to be in the village of Mamaronek. Uh, we are preparing to open our second establishment on the avenue, on the previous location of Moonlight on the Ave, and um, on the Barkila. We're not, we're not rent, we're just doing, a rem we're just remodeling the place and putting new fixtures in. And, um, it will be the same use. Um, uh, does anybody from the public wish to address this application? I don't see any of them. All right. My, my Robin, first. Robin. Okay. Wait, I, don't recall, see, I don't recall receiving a notification. I don't know if, if I'm within the 400 feet of this particular operation, but I'm going to recuse myself anyway. Okay. Um, There's one person, person that I'm saying. Okay. Will you let them in? Or? Glenn Kip at 506 Hill Street. Um, I read the application and I don't think that it's really ready for a hearing because it did not state the type of establishment that they're going to be running or the type of food that they're going to be uh, having. I don't know if it's going to be a jazz music bar, a sports bar. Um, I just can't tell. And it has no, no, uh, no uh, type of food. What type of food is going to be served at all isn't listed. Is is it like the uh, the wine bar? Is is it more like um, the smokehouse? I just think that you're going to need a lot more information. And then I know that they're also looking to have music. Um, the type of uh, music that they're looking to have. Are they looking to have a, acoustic? Are they looking to have? I just know this one, you guys know I'm pro business. And I just know from these hearings that this is the type of information that you're going to be asking. And I think that, you know, before you, you waste too much time, I think the applicant should go do a little research and just uh, shore up these questions for the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else from the public? <coughs> Okay, um, I had a couple questions. I think um, Glenn raised a, a very good question about the, um, in particular about the music um, that you want to have. And I realize that we do not grant a special permit for outside use, but to the extent we can, we have concerns, we can limit our special permit for the outside. You know, we can limit our special permit has, we can limit the use of the outside as a condition, I think. Um, but my other question for the applicant is, are you doing interior alterations or no alterations? Are you moving the kitchen? Are you expanding the number of seats? Are you doing anything like that? No, absolutely not. Everything is staying the same. Just remodeling. Yeah, I know. It was the word remodeling. It's not clear what the word remodeling means. Well, changing the fixtures, changing the bar counter, the kitchen is in the back, so everything's staying the same. It's 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 seventy five percent ready to operate. I mean, we're just changing the seats, the, the type of the seats. The we're not changing the seating capacity; it's staying the same. We're just changing the light fixtures, etc. The 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 bathrooms are staying the same. 
I, I, anybody I, else, uh, other members of the board? I, I think that the relevant question, we've given a special permit for the space before for a sit down restaurant. So we would be hard put not to uh, approve a special permit for a sit down restaurant. Um, I think I don't need to know what the food is, but I need to know um, what type of food establishment are you, yep. it, will it be a serve at the table restaurant, sit down restaurant, or are you creating a carry out restaurant? Are you creating a fast food restaurant? Um, what kind of a food establishment are yeah. you? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so what the uh, previous to what the gentleman pointed out, I did realize that I would, I didn't include the menu yet because there hasn't been a menu yet, but I can definitely answer gladly answer all the, the what kind of food I'm going to be serving. But it's going to be uh, same like Moonlight, it's be serving at the tables. So it'll be lunch and dinner, full menu. And uh, it's going to be Mexi It's going to be a Mexican cuisine and a Mediterranean mix. And there will be alcohol served there, which there was a existing bar at the place. And um, I also think that we sounds would, good. It would, be, it would be difficult to, um, as these meetings get later and later, it's hard to hear about food and not get hungry. <laughs> um, so it's like a wine tapas bar. I, I mean, if they, you want to make it a little. But it would be. It's not a self-serve, it's no. not a buffet, it's, it's weight, uh, you know, weight service at your table. Um, and so that is what we have okayed for several different businesses that I can see right here in the past. And we have approved that you can have acoustic music inside. Um, I would just wanna add that the doors and windows have to be closed. Yep. If That's you're true. playing music at a certain point or at least at 10 o'clock at night, you need to close it. Um, and no amplified music, which is what it stated in the past special permits that the business had had. Um, and also um, to Robin's point, I know you're asking about, I don't know what, it, there's nothing in the special permits that were granted the previous owners, the right to put a band outside on the sidewalk. So I'm not sure if they had approval with, they have, that's, um, I, I would not be granting um, live music outside um, as part of the special permit, but I'm, I also don't see that it was part of the special permit. So I'm not sure where that came from. We don't have purview over the sidewalk. That's up to the village manager who yeah. issues these, these license. Um, so um, I'm assuming since Moonlight had these um, licenses and authorization since they always had live music outside on a I don't know about always. They often had live music outside on Friday and Saturday nights. Sorry, can I interrupt? And the one before that also. So it was only they only have they only had privilege to do it on Thursdays. Oh, it was Thursdays. <laughs> so you're expand. You want to do it Friday and Saturday instead of Thursday? No, I said Friday, Saturday, Sunday inside, indoor. I think he wants to keep the acoustic music indoors and he's ready to shut the doors on the, uh, when he's- playing. I understand that, but he said he's gonna go for the, so you just, you just do, I assume you're gonna wanna do outdoors, aren't you gonna yeah, wanna do outdoors? Outdoor, uh, for obvious, for next coming years in, on Thursdays. Cause they, I spoke to uh, Catherine, which is the person who gives uh, these permits. She, she, I was told it was only Thursdays. Oh, okay, so sorry, I didn't know. Um, Okay, I know I passed it and there'd been live music. I didn't pay attention to it. I thought that's what you were asking. So, uh, the music. Okay, I'm sorry. Never mind. Robin. Anyone else? Robin, I am not. We. I am in excess of 400 feet. Okay, so now, so you are you unrecusing yourself? Yes. Okay, I, I I checked. Okay, I got one for Roaster Cafe, and I did not get noticed for this one. Okay. The, the the thing that needs to be verified, if he's playing music indoor and it's going to be three nights a week, he may need a cabaret license. Absolutely. Okay. Um, outdoor music, I am not a fan. I, I can tell you right now, I am not a fan because it disturbs the residents that actually live in the village. And I think that, you know, um, and while it may not be our, our place, to say it's an issue, I, I think it needs to be brought up that there are residents who live there who have school-aged children 
and they need to be considered for any outdoor music, especially if it's going to be amplified. That's all I have to say about that application right there. Doug, you probably know that I agree with you there. I think though this is different than when we were looking at Modern on the Rails. Modern on the Rails is not on the village sidewalk as I understand it. It was somehow a part of their premises that they're renting for Metro North. So I feel that we, I think when we went through what was going on outside, we felt we had a little bit more jurisdiction over that. But mm -hmm. in this case, um, I agree with Robin that this is something for the village manager and the village um, decides what goes on there. But I, agree. I think I think Doug, if you have a concern about the outside music here, I think you need to make your um, concern, raise your concern with the village manager and or the board of trustees. Um, no, I I, under, I understand that. I'm looking at it from the perspective of the residents that actually live on the village and the school age kids that actually reside in those places, and you know they need their sleep. So as well as the applicant um, would be okay if the doors and windows had to be closed at 10 if you are playing music inside. That's correct. That's fine. Yep. And there's also just to point out there is a noise ordinance as to the maximum number of decibels that can be reached. And it's 70 up until 10 p.m. and 60 at 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. the following morning. And that you can find in the noise ordinance. Does anybody else from the board, Greta or Abby, do you have any questions or anything else you want to say on this application? Yeah, I just want to confirm. So this is um, going to be acoustic music and is there going to be a limit to the number of people who will be, number of musicians who will be playing at one time? Limitations? Oh, I'm sorry, what's the question again? Yes, is there going to be a limit to the number of musicians who will be playing at one given time? Yes. I think he's going to, you're going to comply with what was given to the last, in the Correct. last, and there was a limit. I believe there was, okay. I believe there okay. was three. Okay, and I guess the other question I have is, just for clarification, there's an office space in the back of the restaurant which you will not be using, is that right? An office space? It looked that way. When I looked at the plans. In the special permit that was, if we are just going to go with the same conditions of the last special permit, it actually specifies in there that the office has to be used by the proprietor of the restaurant. Is that what that is what, what you're looking for, Greta? That it's not a separate business going on in the back? There, yeah, that was just a whole, that's just a whole, that's, they were using it as an office. Are you, what are you going to use it as? It's uh, as, what was it? Just shelves. Storage. Storage, pretty much. Okay. All right, if no one has um, any other, no, no, nobody on the board has any other questions or comments, um, why don't we, we can close this application? Yes? I'll, I'll make a motion to close. Is there a second? Yes. All right, um, Greta? Yes. Doug? Yes. Meg? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. So this application is closed. We may or may not get to it tonight. I'll just leave it at that. Um, Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, okay. So the next application is 2I2020-131 Highview Street. Um, I need to, to step aside for a minute, just uh, not recusing myself. I just need to, um, to step aside um, and, um, um, you know, I mean, we can begin it, although I probably get them to get, have, need them to have repeat their application, or we can just, I don't quite know what the best thing to do at this point. You want to take five minutes, Robin? Yeah, why don't, can we do that? Can we somehow pause for five minutes? Yeah, yeah. No that would be great. Thank you. Okay.
So the application is 2I202131 Highview Street, an appeal of a building permit. Is the applicant here? Am I here? Okay, so you can go, you go ahead. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, my name is Doreen yeah. Roney. I just want for full disclosure to say that I am an appointed official of the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission. However, I'm representing myself and my personal property rights this evening. So uh, this has nothing to do with the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission. Um, basically, on review of the submitted materials, we're here tonight um, seeking a reversal or annulment of the building inspector's determination to issue the residential renovations alterations building permit for rock removal and soil moving on a vacant 0.54 acre lot without requisite review by the planning board under article <clears throat> 11 of the zoning code which is something that is within your jurisdiction i believe uh also the subject lot was allegedly formed from another parcel and it never underwent subdivision review by uh any board in the village of Mamaroneck. Uh, in, in I will say this, that some of the materials that uh, my co-applicants and I provided are not on your agenda. Uh, a series of emails, uh, and we had contacted Mr. Wong about that. It's not on the public agenda. And in addition, after filing this appeal, um, I went to the West County website on land records and there is an easement for this property in question that seems to be attached to 127 highview street all that information was provided so we're seeking um to annul and reverse the building inspector's determination to issue the permit and hopefully you will agree and send the applicant to the planning board for site development plan approval and questionably uh the lot and how it was formed. Uh, uh, okay. Um, is your co-applicant here? Is he does uh, does if I recall thing? Yeah. Can you can you hear me? This yes. is Mr. Nesson. Yes. Uh, very good. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would like to also to make a brief introduction so you're familiar with uh, with us and the uh, matter. Um, we're both uh, me, uh, my, my family, and Ms. Rooney's and her family. We are owners of properties that are adjacent to the slot directly um, in line with it. And we've been uh, residents here for a very long period of time. So we're familiar with this neighborhood and uh, uh, also landscape and kind of a topography of, uh, of this land. So all our properties in that spot stand on a single uh, rock ledge, which is sloping both or multiple directions. Uh, and a lot of uh, plants are uh, mature plants on this land and large trees that are standing with deep roots. Uh, so since about March of this year, we observed um, sudden development, rapid development on this property uh, when um, apparently new owner or owner started to remove all the vegetations. Uh, trees were falling, uh, so it's, it's still visible there. And then they started to remove the rock, drilling the rock and removing the rock from the side of the property. And uh, they obtained permit for that. So um, uh, we are certainly concerned about environmental impact of this and also impact on our properties. So we questioned uh, our uh, village inspector about this and uh, originally we were told that it might be something to be looked at and eventually we were told that uh, the person on the property has a legal rights to proceed and uh, um, this permit was issued. Uh, so he started to remove rock in the past three months, he, months he's drilling there. So um, there's two kind of a problems uh, with this uh, um, development. One is the kind of a legality of this permit and another one is environmental impact and safety. 
So we reviewed what uh, was available from the village in terms of application. And we found few serious uh, deficiencies there. I think it's more of a legal deficiencies. So number one was that uh, applicant claimed himself as an owner and signed sworn affidavit. His name is Arben Deda. Although when we uh, pulled the uh, deed of the property and tax rolls, the owner of the property is a completely different person. Uh, her name is uh, Albania Research, something like that. So, and she's a single owner of the property. So somebody misrepresented himself as an owner on this application to start with. And I think that that's an issue. Um, second issue was uh, uh, he placed the developer name on this application as it's some towel and kitchen and bath company, which uh, provided a license of home improvement company. And on their website, the only work they do is uh, renovate kitchens and baths and do some additions to existing houses and seemingly have no expertise in removing rock or doing any kind of excavation work. Uh, also, their, uh, uh, their licenses, liability, and workers' compensation also expired, according to what we received on the FOIL request. So they were working without uh, proper even insurances. And um, from what we observed, the actual applicant person drilling himself this rock, and he never provided any license, nor uh, liability insurance or anything else to qualify for that job himself. Um, and I think the third is a big issue also, and uh, which Ms. Rooney already referred to, was a deed that was created by a previous owner when he kind of divided uh, his previous property, which was 139 Highview into two pieces, 139 and 131. And he was also an owner of 127 next door property. So on this deed, he created an easement which encompasses both properties, 127 and 131. And it exactly is been going through this area where the rock is drilled right now. If you read that deed, it explicitly states that the owners of 127 Highview Street have a rights to uh, that easement on 131 property and uh, require written permission from the owners and his heirs from 127 to do any work on 131 Highway. Uh, as far as we know, no uh, such permission was obtained and this um, you know, person who claims himself as an owner, who is not an owner, drilling the rock on, uh, without permission of uh, uh, restricted uh, deed from the other owner of the property that is next door. So we have you know, multitude of legal issues just with the permit itself. So we requested to put a stop order and, and uh, kind of deem this uh, permit as legally defective until all these issues are cured and, uh, and, uh, and also explained what uh, this person is trying to do on this property. Because there was no site plan review, there was nothing presented that uh, can show us what he's planning to develop there. Right now it was just massive uh, vegetation removal and some drilling of the rock in the front uh, um, that also probably have environmental impact and run, you know, storm water management maybe need to be done, etc. But I'll let uh, Ms. Rooney to talk about that. She's a little bit more versed in the village uh, code regulations. Well, I, I, I just wanted to say that the most important thing that um, Dr. Nesson mentioned is there's a deed restriction um, within Westchester County for two things, access on 127 Highview Street, which is next door, but into perpetuity, the owners of 8-3-51.2, which is 131 Highview Street, must request written permission and approval of Mauro M. Gabrielle, his heirs and assignees, for any proposed improvements or a site plan development of this lot. Um, that is the most key thing. I know Mr. Tavolacci, we, we haven't been able to go into the um, building department to review the records and files, but Mr. Tavolacci alluded to the fact that he does have 
information on deeds and I'm not understanding why this deed restriction wasn't part of that record, but I haven't seen it. Um, when it comes to subdivision review, I, I pretty much put this forth in all of the written communication that I provided to you. Um, 342.11d with separation of a lot, um, that's still questionable. I don't know how these lots were separated, but more importantly, site development plan approval is necessary for any land disturbing activities of property that is a half an acre or more, or 25% of um, any other property. Um, actually, we're looking for an interpretation of that code also because Mr. Tavalacci did not agree with that. Um, you know, this is something that I found on 712 near state village law, which pertains to the Zoning Board of Appeals. <laughs> Jurisdictionally, you do have the capability of doing so. Um, yeah, is there, thank you. Is there anyone from the applicant, from the, I'm sorry, from the public who wishes to speak in particular is, does the developer and or owner of the premises um, that is the subject of this application. Is, is he or she here? It doesn't look like anyone from the public wishes to speak. So, um, Frank, I got a lot of questions on this, but in particular, the, the two that I uh, that 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 I was curious about were um, the issues with which I didn't realize from the application were about the excavation company. I mean, you know, we don't usually review this, but I suppose they're challenging the permit. So arguably if the permit wasn't issued, was issued invalidly for any reason, presumably we have the right to hear that. So the so a couple questions for you are, um, is, the, is the excavation company properly licensed? The first one. Second, is there an application to DOB for other construction or are we just now excavating? In other words, do they have a new building permit? Do they have anything like that? Um, when I went and looked at it, it looked incredibly, I mean, there was a big slope it looked like on this property and maybe it isn't a slope, maybe it's just rock, I'm not sure necessarily of the difference, but um, can you explain that kind of slope issue? And then the subdivision, did this go through subdivision approval. So those are my questions. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure the bo other board members have everything else, uh, other, may have other questions, but um, rather than load you up with too many at once, could you answer those questions and then move on to other board members and their questions for you? I hope so. So Robin, I'd just like to read the correspondence that I had sent to Doreen about the subdivision. Uh, and it says in part, until 2004, the above property was part of a single lot with 139 Highview Street owned by Mor Moro Gabriel. In 2004, Richard Spinelli, the surveyor, was asked to divide that single lot owned by Gabriel into two separate parcels. Mr. Spinelli proceeded to do so under the local code provision in effect at the time which was from 1967 till I, I think about 2008. A formal subdivision application was only necessary if the single lot was to be divided into three or more parcels. When the single lot was divided into two parcels, as was the case at the time, it was deemed an apportionment accomplished solely upon submission of a survey map of the two parcels to the building department and tax assessor's office, office, which was done by Mr. Spinelli. No formal application was needed to divide the property and no planning board approval was required. It was a simple lot line chains, change. Uh, the, the two parcels now are known as 131 Highview, which is the subject of this appeal, and 139 Highview, the original house, they were both separately assessed and since then separately taxed on the tax rolls. 
There have been two distinct transfers of title. Uh, I don't think we have to get into that. Um, uh, but to uh, uh, Doreen's point, the owner of the parcel, Albana, uh, I can't even pronounce her last name, she is the wife of the person who's doing the work on the property. The husband is drilling the rock and did the clearing of the brush that Doreen uh, alluded to. Um, and we, so, so the brush clearing that they did, uh, you know, uh, Doreen was quoting 342.75C, which says any vegetation or earthwork. And I, you know, I, the fact that it's tied in with earthwork, this is not, they didn't do lot clearing on this property. Uh, like where you would cut down a swath of trees to clear for a construction of a house. They didn't pull stumps with excavators. There's no excavation machines there. Everything that's been done there has been done by hand, including the drilling of the rock. They didn't strip the topsoil. They haven't compacted the soils. In, in the building permit, we even uh, made them put a uh, plywood ramp so the workers, which are two or three a day that are drilling there, walk on the plywood as to not uh, compact the soils. Um, it, you, you know, to me, it was uh, tantamount to, you know, a little more than uh, pulling weeds on a lot. It was mostly vines, overgrown shrubs, a lot of down trees from uh, the storms that he cut up. He did cut a couple of trees also, I admit that, but uh, this was uh, a few months ago. So uh, most of it was clearing of underbrush. It wasn't lot clearing like you were speaking of with machines, track machines, compaction of soils, that type of thing. So just to, to go back to the question, there's no, what the village would define as excavation that's proposed on this property? No, not at, not at this time. Not at this time. And this was one of the uh, points that uh, I was going back and forth with Doreen, that he hasn't applied for a building permit to put a house up. There's no SWIP in, you know, in the works for uh, a disturbance on this property. He, for the most part, it's not steep slopes on this property. Uh, where that rock outcropping is, and the rock is the size of a living room in a house, he's been, that, that was steep right there because of that rock outcropping. And he's been drilling it and breaking it up into two by two foot pieces, which he's gonna eventually use on the property. It's just staying in place. It's not being hauled away in trucks or anything like that. Once that rock is gone, I would venture to say that, you know, I don't need a topo to know that, that that's, there, there's no steep slopes per se on that property. Where the house so, site is, is, rel is probably single digits, two or three percent, where the house site will be, I should say. So someone can demolish, take down, I don't know what the right word is, can dispose of, eliminate, remove any of the above. Rock, as long as they do it by a handheld drill and well, well, no, see, the thing is, if, if they were going to bring in track machines, they would have to put a construction entrance. There would be much more disturbance. They would be ripping out the rock, compacting soils, moving rock and soils with the machines, which is a lot more disturbance than what they're doing. So I, I, didn't, I didn't feel that the, what they were doing between the vegetation that Doreen was referring to and the rock removal that they're doing, it, it rose to the threshold of being uh, 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 bad for that site. All right, other board members, do you have questions for Frank? Let's try and get all of the questions we have now for Frank. Uh, I just, I just want to say for the record that um, I'm an acquaintance of one of the applicants, um, Doreen Roney. I, um, I met her when I was for a year on HCZM. Again, she's an acquaintance. Um, I don't know her family. I didn't know she lived on this street until I got the application. But I, um, and I certainly think I can um, participate and be fair and impartial. I, but I just wanted to disclose that before we proceeded. 
Thank you. Okay. I'm okay. I'm looking yeah. at 3-75. And it says you need a site plan for any proposed clearing of vegetation on a property that's half acre or larger. Is this site less than a half? No, it's five. I think it's 5.2. It's over a half acre. Well, it doesn't talk about that it has to be earthwork. It doesn't talk about you have to have large machinery. It doesn't talk about having to, whatever you were describing, taking off the soil. It simply says proposed theory of vegetation. And or earthwork. And I, or earthwork, but just right. proposed clearing of vegetation. I went to Google Maps. I went to the site. It does look like an awful lot of vegetation has been disturbed. Um, and it is a huge rock that's up higher than the street. I went to Google Maps and I saw a photo. You know how you can go to Google Maps and get the street view. And there are three trees where there are not three trees now. And a lot, a lot you cannot see through the vegetation that's there to the spot where the rock is now. So if that was the, what they took down, um, it definitely qualifies as clearing of vegetation. You can also see the stump, so it is several trees. Um, so I'm not sure why it isn't very clear that it needs a site plan because vegetation was definitely cleared. It also looks very high. When you're talking about a slope, I don't know what it makes a difference that it's a slope that's caused by a rock or it's a slope that's caused by something else, but it definitely is very much higher. You're saying when that's taken down, it will no longer be a slope. But the whole point of a site plan and the stormwater is that it existed in a certain way and now things are going to be different. And you might be saying, oh, well, we'll have less runoff because it's lower, but we shouldn't determine that. We do know we're changing the slope. We're changing something fairly significant about the, the lot. Um, so it, it's no question in my mind, it's over a half an acre and you're, you're I saw the Google Maps, I saw the result of the vegetation on the ground and the tree stumps that are there. So I realized there was a lot of vegetation that was taken out. Um, so, um, uh, I, I agree. Oh. I you know, I was just gonna, gonna say, as I look at this site development, as I look at 342.75, site development plan approval shall be required for in all districts for erection or enlargement of a building or other structure other than one or two family dwellings. We don't know what this is going to be. So we have, so just no going, so, so I see no reason that um, the point about the fact that it is clearing of vegetation or earthwork on a property that fits within the category of a half acre or larger. You're saying that A, B, C, all of those have to be satisfied. You're not thinking that that C, any proposed clearing is enough to warrant a site plan? I didn't, that's not what I said, Meg. It's oh, not what I said. I misunderstood you then. I mean, you know, it's not what I said. What I said was, when I read this, my first thought was, well, do they need it if it's not a single family, if it is a single family home? But we have no idea since he, the, since Frank has now told us there's no application for anything. So to the extent that there was an argument that it is for a single family home, we don't know it's for a single or two family home. And therefore, I think that we would have to rely on the D is the issue. Um, as the applicant says. So that's what I wanted to say. Because um, I know uh, some, there's an email or something from Frank that talks about one or two family home is exempt, but here we don't know that, which is one reason I wanted to know whether they submitted applications for anything. Um, I'm sorry, Abby, you had something you wanted to. No, I was just, I'm also looking at this on the Google map and I, and I also wanted to, I mean, it looks pretty steep and looks like there's been a ton of vegetation cut down to me. I mean, it's a big picture of it. So, so Frank, can you answer the question about why uh, 342.75D doesn't apply? Yeah. I mean, that's really the question. D you said or C? D, that's the one that's, um, sorry, I apologize, C, right, the proposed clearing of vegetation or earthwork. So, so why? Since that seems to be the, right, why does that, would that not apply here? I, I just think that the spirit of that 342.70C is about 
lot clearing, like I said, cutting down trees and preparing for a house. What was there was over 60 years of overgrown vines, shrubs, weeds. Uh, uh, you couldn't even walk. A lot of down limbs from, from numerous storms over the years. That's what the applicant cleaned up. And he didn't even take it off the site. He piled the uh, uh, vegetation, uh, I guess you'd call it, from all those vines and, and high shrubs and, and, and overgrown vegetation on the lot uh, just so he could walk, just so he can walk on his property. Um, the, 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 usually a steep slope is something over 25%. Other than where that rock is, there are no steep slopes on that property. Because I've walked all around that property other than where the rock is, which admittedly is gigantic, and the guy is taking a, uh, uh, you know, a, a big job there to get rid of that rock in the, in the way he's doing it also, um, not with, with machinery and chipping or blasting or that type of thing. So earthwork doesn't, so that dealt with the vegetation question, your view of the vegetation question, but so this doesn't relate, this is not earthwork since they're not using equipment? Yeah. There's no machines that have been on that property. They haven't really disturbed the earth, if you want to say. Uh, they've, they've taken out underbrush. That, that's what they cleared, really. Right, but I'm not talking about the underbrush. underbrush. I'm talking about the rock. They're definitely removing rock. No yes. question about that. So you're saying that that rock removal is not considered earthwork? No, no. <laughs> uh, to me, it's, uh, it's I, because it says vegetation or earthwork, and everybody, even Frank, is saying a huge amount of vegetation was cleared. So regardless of what earthwork. Sorry, Greg. Greta, did you have something? You sounded like... Yeah, I was just going to, you know, for what it's worth, I, I mean, I was trying to look up the definition of earthworks. Um, and, you know, the various definitions I got, um, earthworks are engineering works created through the processing of parts of Earth's surface involving quantities of soil and unformed rock. Earth may be moved to another location and formed onto a desired shape. Much of earthworks involves machine excavation nice. or fill or backfill, but it says much of earthworks. It doesn't indicate that it has to be um, machine excavation, that it's a, a, a um, essential criteria for it. Um, process of moving earth, rock, or other materials with tools, equipment, or explosive. So, I mean, I, from the definitions, you know, I got, you know, it was, it wasn't limited to, to machines. Again, I was just kind of Googling definitions. And if I could move to another point about the, <laughs> it was some time ago that this subdivision of the parcel happened. And I know in our code now that you can decide to subdivide divide a parcel that has a house on one space and you can just decide to subdivide the lots. As, but if you're going to put a house on the other lot now, you have to make sure that you didn't make anything non-conforming on the space where there is a house. So was that not true at the time that, the, that this parcel was subdivided or it was true and can you confirm that by splitting the lot that there was no impact on the conformity of the lot where the house exists. I'm sure it was true at the time it was done and it's true today. <laughs> you can't make the existing house non-conforming by taking away and putting it onto the new lot. So, so I have a point of order. Excuse yeah. me? If the board wishes to hear it. Sure. Uh, there's a deed restriction on the property of 127 Highview Street, which is next door to 131. And the property on 131 crosses the survey, actually crosses the house, the driveway and a corner of the house at 127 Highview Street. 
So that house on 127 Highview Street is not set on the lot properly. The property of 131 Highview Street actually crosses within the driveway and the corner of the house. If you look at deeds and surveys. And the reason why I brought up the deed restriction is if you look at that information, okay, nothing was supposed to happen on the parcel known as 131 Highview Street. There's a deed restriction on that portion of property. So, you know, as far as all yards are concerned, it might have been a portion from 139 Highview Street but it certainly impacts 127 Highview Street. I, I, you know, I can't speak about that uh, uh, easement that Doreen's talking about, but I believe this 139 originally was trying to subdivide the property behind 131 into something like eight different building lots. Yes. That, that, are you familiar with that, Doreen? Yes, it was a subdivision that um, that a law was changed for for the developer a long time ago. Right. And we were successful in getting the law switch, the 50 foot right of way law switched back. Right. Because so, eight eight properties could not fit on the lot without a 40 foot right of way. Right. I'm very That's, familiar with the property and the right. one next door. And I, and I understood that also. And I think the final upshot from that was they decide, they uh, subdivided into two lots only after that original idea was shot down. Um, well, I'm not I, sure I, about- I would like, I would like to uh, talk to Mr. Spinelli now and ask him about this easement because this is the first I'm hearing about it. It's on the well, it was, website. Yeah, it's included with our application. So from, I don't know, I don't want to, I'm just moving this along. Um, I believe that the applicant has asked us for a stop work order and for us to, uh, to um, direct this to the planning board for a site plan and the stormwater treatment um, study. Um, I, I have no doubt that it requires a site plan. And I think that a lot of these questions that going over the easement and how the lot is, um, is, is divided up um, should be reviewed by the planning board. And that's where I'm at. So I don't know what else. So what I, is, what I is think it? that the subdivision is done. I don't think we can review the subdivision anymore I mean, I think it's there. It's been done. It was done in accordance with the requirements at the time. But your issue about, I mean, the question about the, um, whether it increased the nonconformity, um, nobody reviewed it at the time. If you could just submit a survey, then there was no determination as to whether or not it created or increased the degree of nonconformity of the existing building. I, we actually have had many applications where that is an issue um, on subdivision. So I don't know, I don't know that we have power at this point. And I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what the, what we would have power at this point, if in fact, at that point, they did create, I don't know that we have the power to overturn a subdivision. That's, that's, you know, I really don't know that we have that power. The, the question about the, um, site plan would be if we determine that in fact we consider either there was clearing of vegetation or we determine that there was earthquake we do not have the power to order the building to, i don't think we have the power i'll leave this for my Hartman, uh to order the building department to issue a stop work order all we can do is decide that the permit was not correctly validly issued and then it would be up to the building department to issue a stop work order, but I don't think we have the power to give that order. Is that true, Michael? Yeah, that's how I understand it exactly. In my application, I provided um, the site from New York State Village Law, which governs the zoning board. It's 7712B, permitted action by the Board of Appeals. Orders, requirements, decisions, interpretations, determinations. The Board of Appeals may reverse 
or affirm wholly or partly or may modify the order requirement decision interpretation or determination appealed from and shall make such order requirement decision interpretation or determination as in its opinion ought to have been made in the matter by the administrative official charged with the enforcement of such local law and to that end shall have all the powers of the administrative official from whose order requirement decision interpretation or determination the appeal is taken. So I'm not an attorney, but that is what I found in New York State Village Law, which is part of our local code. I think that if we revoke the building permit, which we do have the power to do, that is what we would do. There is then nothing, then there would be, it would be up to the building department. So I don't think we can do it. I, I know what the village law says, um, Ms. Roney, but I don't know that we have that power. I'm not too sure either. That's why I'm relying on, on you. Right. And that's what that was my conclusion. We can certainly overturn the issuance of the building permit. Um, yes. No question about that. If that's what we decide we want to do. Um, so really, I think the question before us is whether or not we think that this uh, a site development plan should have been issued because this work that's being done is earth, week, earth work or clearing of vegetation. If so, then um, we would say that the permit shouldn't have been issued and they would have to proceed in compliance with all the law. So I think that's what we really decide once we decide that, that kind of. And I think we can also decide that it does need a site plan review because we are standing in in this, we have this jurisdiction to decide what should have happened if, as though we were the building department. And we can say it requires a- Well, that's what we would be saying by saying it. it that's, what, that's what I just said. We need to determine whether it should have been issued without a site plan development. Site plan, development plan approval, is what it's called. And that's what we would be determining, yes. So to what end? There's no house plans. What would the planning board be site? What, what would the site plan review be on? There's no proposed house. There's no SWIP. There's no... Uh, it would, no it, there is a stormwater that's required. And right. if you look at the, at the code, it says if there's vegetation removal, it needs a site plan and it needs stormwater treatment. Yeah, I'm not sure why this would be, um, why the question of what the site plan would review, since there is a condition in the site plan review requirement that clearing of vegetation or earthwork, that's an independent requirement when you need site plan approval or site development plan approval. And so um, there are standards, there are whatever else is in there, um, would be something for the planning board to consider all of those standards, 3276, I think that might, maybe that's the only one. So it would be the requirements of 34276 for the planning board to review as it relates to this application. I have another point of order if you're trying to figure that out. On the environmental assessment form that was filed by the applicant with this application, the area of disturbance on that form was 0.16 acres, which is 6,996 square feet. And our stormwater management law requires uh, stormwater management to happen for anything over 1,000 square feet also. So that is part of what site development plan does. And the stormwater management official in the village of Mamaroneck I don't think reviewed this application whatsoever. So we just, as, as two adjacent residents, want to make sure that development occurs within the codes of the village of Amaranek and that everything is reviewed and the liability insurance are there for this work to happen. Uh, any other board members have anything to ask, say, discuss? Yeah, I have a question. Frank, that lot was overgrown, right? Very overgrown, yes. But, but and, You and could have issued him a violation for violating the code, you know, right? 
for grass too tall. It Maybe. wasn't grass. This wasn't grass. I understand, but you know, I mean, it's unsightly. You could have issued a violation for for for, for many four lot to get to that disarray. A more right important, a more important point is none of the root systems to to the trees, to the vines, to the uh, overgrown brush. None of that was disturbed. It was flush cut to clear the lot so they could walk around the lot and do what they wanted to do. I do have pictures of the before and after. Stop, one at a time, please. So, Doug, you were asking things. Has an application been put that they want to develop that lot in no. for a house? No, not yet. No. No, no so, I'm sure there will be, but there hasn't been any. Right now, all they want to do is clean that lot out. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. Was that was it just uh, Ms. Roney that wanted to speak, or was there somebody else on the board who had something? Well, I do I do have pictures of the prior to the clearing of vegetation and after, and vegetation on the ground was removed and roots were removed. So right now there's bare soil there. But it has regrown to weeds. Oh, yeah. If the board would like to see pictures, I can provide them. I would venture to guess if that lot sit, sat there for another six months, those weeds would go back to probably four feet or six feet tall again. True, however, there is oh. euonymus. There were, you know, the, the, the shrub burning bush, which is actually an invasive. It's called euonymus, it's yeah, burning I, I, bush. I in the you. fall, it gets red. That's what covered the ground there. And ground cover is real important for stormwater management. The steep slope, if you look at Westchester GIS or our own um, GIS in the village of Mamaronek, that is a 15 to 25% slope where that rock is. And the elevation of the lot is higher. So where's all the stormwater going to go? In addition, our comprehensive plan the current one that's in effect says development on steep slopes is a development constraint. Okay, but, but there is no development. Nothing's been submitted to develop the property. No, but you're removing the rock that is holding back the soil on the top of the hill. That's it, okay, when the rock is removed, what happens to the water? The runoff. You don't have steep slopes on that property. You just have that rock outcropping. And what he's trying to do is to get access to his property, which he's entitled to. And he has to answer for that rock. And that's what he's doing. We're not sure I have a question ahead. about the rock wait, removal. Wait, wait. wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, wait, I, I, stop. I, I, Everybody, let's all take it one at a time. Meg, do you want to go first? You can go first and then uh, Doug and then I'll go. You're not trying to stop the resident from being able to use his property. We're just asking the resident to comply with the code and so that he needs to go for site plan and he needs to have the stormwater um, treatment approved and then he can go forward with plans that are approved by the site plan. So it, it's nobody saying he can't do something if it's allowed. It may, he also has to check out whether or not the, the parcels are conforming. We're asking him to comply with the code. We are not. We are not making the decision as to what he can or cannot do with his his lot. Um, Doug, did you have something? Yes. What site plan is he getting reviewed? His his survey, because there is nothing that has been submitted that he is looking to develop. There's no house. There's nothing. So what is he going to do? Get a site plan of nothing but his property and submit it to the planning board? That's what I was trying to say before. That is a, that a way, that, I, I hate to say this, I don't care what 375 says, that is a waste of time, effort, energy, and money. Oh, but we're, um, well, wait, wait, let me, my, so my, my concern here is the following, which is um, he, it, he submit he's forget the clearing of the brush because I don't I'm less concerned about that. It's the rock issue. Um, if he was building a single family house, right? He'd submitted 
an application for a single family house. And his application for a single family house, assuming that's what he's gonna do, I don't know, but let's just take it as a suppose. Um, and obviously that would have to include removing the, presumably that would include removing the rock, all right? At that point, what would you be, Frank, what would you be reviewing? In other words, what I'm trying to find out is by removing the rock now with no development, has he kind of then circumvented something that you would be reviewing in connection with reviewing an application for development? Well, only in the way that he would have to make a construction entrance to remove that rock with mechanical equipment with excavators, with chipping hammers, or blasting or whatever. He, th in that regard, he may have circumvented that, but he hasn't applied for a house. And that's why I said before, to what end? You're gonna to go to the planning board. He doesn't have a house. What, what are they reviewing? Well, but, but the site development plan approval doesn't say you have to have a proposed development. It says site development plan approval is required for any proposed clearing or vegetation, a vegetation or earthwork on any property of a certain size or with a certain amount. So the code does not say you only do this for development. So my question is, why would he, if he would need to put up the, the um, whatever he needs to install the, the uh, truck entrance, et cetera, for the excavation, why would he need that in the future that he doesn't need it now for doing the same work. So let's assume, and my point is, he, so he decides, he doesn't do this. He let's assume he didn't do this. And he submits a, um, a, an application to the building department to build a single family house. And in the single family house, um, he wants to get rid of the rock. And then he wants to um, excavate in order to put a foundation. Okay, right. that's obviously, I mean, presumably that's what he would have to do. Right. So, um, by my question really is by removing the rock now, has he established a condition that's different from what he, we would, what would you would be otherwise reviewing in a way that allows an issuance of a building permit for the development of a house? Or, and I know there's nothing there now. But, you know, there's laws that prevent piecemeal doing things. So I'm trying to see if he's trying to piecemeal mm -hmm. doing something. Which well, is that's thicker segmentation. Well, let me finish. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, that's why the question is whether or not that is, um, is you know, is, is, is something that, in fact, you would look at have, or be looking at were it not done as a separate application. Frank, can you answer? After Frank answers the question, then uh, Mr. Nesson and Ms. Roney, you can speak. So if his application had in fact been a proposal to build a, build a house, he would have to put a construction entrance. He would have to bring in heavy equipment. He'd have to cut the trees down where the house goes and where the uh, stormwater management goes. He'd have to pull all those stumps. Then, yeah, you would need a site development plan for that. You would need a SWIP. You would need all those things. I just didn't feel that what he was doing now rose to the threshold of needing a site development plan, a planning board review. It was a, a, an existing lot that had gone through the subdivision process at the time, which was legal. And... Uh, uh, you know th that that's how I that's how I determined what I did. And it seems like Mr. Nesson or wait, I told Mr. Nesson and Ms. Roney that they could speak next. So if either of them wants to speak, um, well, in our application, uh, there is a potential for seeker segmentation here because if you're going to take that portion of the development plan for the entire parcel and then bring in the house plans, that separates the two things. But I want to call the board's attention to one important thing. 342.75 says uses and actions subject to approval. So it's not just the use, the one or two family house. It's also the actions. And I think you're going down the right road. It's, you know, clearing of vegetation or, or earthwork. It's a half an acre. That's, that's the uh, bottom line. The other thing that's concerning is, is there's 
don't forget, a deed restriction pertaining to this property where no work in perpetuity can happen without written permission of the heirs or the property owner of 127 Ivy Street or the previous property owner. Um, I don't know how that's going to fly. Certainly we want to make sure that whatever is developed on this property is within the codes of the village of Mamaroneck. And site development plan approval covers the engineer looking at it, the ecological considerations, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I agree. I just want. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to say a couple of words, if you don't mind. Here, uh, I agree with Ms. Rooney. You know, we wanted to see a whole site plan development, so we have some expectations of what's going to be put on this property and uh, expect to follow uh, all the rules and regulations of the village, uh, not a piecemeal approach, which may result in all kind of problems that are not anticipated. So, um, so I agree, it, it has to be looked as a whole development, not as a um, uh, piece by piece uh, kind of uh, removal of uh, land or uh, vegetation, so et cetera, you know. So I, I, I agree, it has to be looked as a, as a single project, you know. Well, uh, may I, Robin, may I say something? I think Meg, sorry, I stopped Meg from talking before, oh, so let Meg go first. Okay, and then you can go. Frank okay. made an evaluation of, of the code that we're looking about whether or not he's a site plan or not, and it didn't make sense to him, but that's not in his jurisdiction. You could have said you need to go get a variance from the ZBA that we could have said, oh, that there's some good reason why they would get maybe a variance from this condition, um, but it wasn't for you to interpret the code in a different way. But also, I'm not suggesting that the applicant do that because um, if they did come for a variance, I would definitely ask what their ultimate plans were for. Um, and so unless they could confirm that they weren't, they were planning on just taking out some trees so they could sit back there in some lawn chairs or something and not put a house there, um, I would see that, it, that that didn't make sense. And so I don't think that they would be successful with the variance, but that's what should have happened if you thought that the code um, that they were maybe had a chance for uh, an interpretation of the code and got an exception from that in the code. Um, Doug, you wanted to speak? Yes. If they came with an application after they cleared the, the property of vegetation and the rock, they would still have to submit a site plan. They'd have to submit a building plan. They would have to submit a site development plan. They would have to deal with the stormwater runoff. All of those would have to be considered when and if they came to put a building on that site. No matter what. what that's what has to happen. So even though that <coughs> is it piecemeal, I don't know. I can't answer that question. All I do know is that once they decide that they want to develop that lot, they're going to have to put in a construction road. They're going to have to go through the entire building process, planning, and everything else associated with it, stormwater runoff, energy, everything. So I'm a little confused why we're pushing for a site plan which will show vegetation removal and the removal of a rock when, in effect, they would have to go through the entire nine yards once they submitted an application to develop that site. We're looking at, hey, give me your site plan, show me the rock, tell me you want to cut it out right on the site, right on your site plan, vegetation removal, and here you go, planning board. Or, hey, they want to develop, here is a complete set of plans covering every aspect of the code, of what the village code says, what all the ordinance says, it will go through every board. Yeah, Plan but I, everybody. But I think what happens, so it seems to me like this is a loophole, you know, like they could do that, but what if they've already chopped down all their trees first using this loophole? So, no, you no, know, I'm I not think. Tree removal, Abby. I'm not saying tree removal. Well, they've removed trees that's yeah, on their site. So it's, you know. But 
I think so. Something with respect to 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 tree removal. Okay, forget anything else. Um, if they've already removed trees, then I'm not sure what um, we what re revocation of the building permit. Let's assume that's what they do. I I'm not talking. I'm only talking about trees. Forget. I'm not talking about anything else. What if they've already removed trees? There's nothing they're going to do, and the site plan development plan that they're going to present to the planning board is uh, uh, would be would not have those trees on it because that's not what the site looks like. So I'm not sure that the tree removal that happened in the past is something that's an issue here. I think, you know, the rock removal, we can, everybody, I mean, Doug thinks it's not an issue. We may think, other people may think it is, but I think they're two different things. Because I mean, when I went out and looked today, actually, there were a lot of rocks still there, so. Can I, can I ask Frank a question? Sure. Frank, what kind of trees were they that got removed? Uh, I'm not the usual overgrown weed trees. No, I, I think there was a lot of damaged trees, some that were leaning maybe towards the neighbors that they wanted to cut. That's what the applicant had told me. There was a lot of damaged limbs that were lying on that lot, uh, you know, from storms, from many storms over the years where you'd have to be walking over a, a down, you know, 12 inch, 14 inch log. So he did cut those up, um, but again, he didn't pull the stumps. He didn't disturb the roots of anything there that would, uh, uh, that would be a cause for uh, erosion off this property onto either, met, either Mr. Nesson's yeah. property or Doreen's property. Well, oh, when you cut trees, the tree doesn't take up the water. You know, that's, that's the storm water. If you cut a tree down, it doesn't uptake that stormwater into the tree. I don't believe he cut that many trees down. I don't know what type of I, tree. You know, it's, 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 a moot, it's a moot point, but if, if I'm going to ask that if the board's a little sketchy on site development plan approval, if somebody from the village can, you know, pass 342.76, what the general criteria is and the standards of review for site development plan approval, Maybe you'd understand a little better that it's not the rock, it's not this, it's not that. It's the whole development plan because you can't separate pieces of a whole development plan under seeker. That's segmentation. Except the problem with your, the segmentation argument is if they're building a single family house, it would be a type two um, application and there'd be no seeker review. So I'm not sure whether anything here, and I don't know the answer, I'm not sure that this application would in any event be subject to secret review. Um, I don't know that it would be, so I don't think the secret issue is something um, for us to consider. I raised the piecemeal issue because I wanted to make sure that by doing it in stages, they weren't making a change that would affect their ultimate permit. You know, let's do all of these 10 steps first so that when we go for our real permit, we don't have any issues. But I don't think, I don't know that this is a secret issue. So I think unless someone knows for a fact whether this is a secret issue or not, the site plan um, of this site and uh, the other is, I think that's the question. That's the first thing. So I don't know that secret is an issue. So I don't think we should be considering secret here. Um, the second thing that I think is, um, assuming we were to, uh, you know, approve the application and determine that the building permit should not have been issued, given that the only thing they have before the village at this point is um, a, a um, is the clearing piece of this. Um, I don't know, I don't know that we could make them go to the I mean, they may not be, have to be ready. I mean, they could be doing this um, in advance while they think about what they want to do with the site. They could be all ready. They could have the plans almost done. We don't have any idea what they're actually, what's going to happen there. Um, and so I don't think if we decide that they need to go for site plan approval, all we'd be going for site plan approval would relate to the clearings, the um, work, because they don't well, have any yeah. other application pending. Well, so I don't see how we could say to them, 
that you must have an application. So I, I'm not sure that we can do that. The general criteria and standards of review for site development plan approval are A, ecological considerations, result in minimal degradation to unique and irre irreplaceable land types, minimum adverse impact upon critical areas, streams, wetlands, aquifer recharge, discharge, steep slopes, highly erodible soils, area with a high water table, mature stands of mature vegetation, and extraordinary wildlife nesting, conform to the existing geological and topographic features, the landscape, the um, relation of proposed structures to the environment, the scenic surface water drainage, scenic historic archaeological and landmark sites. There are two across Ms. the Roney, street. Ms. Roney, please don't read That's the entire what's code it. to us. Is, is what I, I mean, I don't disagree that they may need site development plan approval now. Nobody, it's not what I said. What I said okay. was if we decide they need site development plan approval, we cannot make them come in with site development approval for an entire house now. They would have to go, and they may not want to do this, but all we could determine is that in order to do the work they have proposed, they would need site development plan approval for that. <clears throat> that's all I'm saying. We, you had said something about how you want to see the whole package, but we, that's, not, that's not what's pending before us, nor can we tell the applicant, you have to have everything ready to go. They might Understood. want to do this and get site development plan approval simply for the work they're doing now and that would be it. So just Point well remember. taken. I didn't understand okay. to begin with. Um, okay. Anybody else on the board have any questions, comments, things, anything, any additional information you want? Any anything? We have to I decide. I yes. just want to say again, I feel like, uh, you know, my big concern here too is just the precedent and, and kind of like a loophole where you could get, you know, I can just easily see people using this as a loophole to kind of avoid a lot of, um, a lot of work that they might have to go through otherwise, so. Anybody else on the board have any questions for the applicant, for, for um, the building department, for anything else? Or anything they want to say before we, if, because if not, I mean, we can, you know, if we want, and then if we want to close the applicant, the public hearing, you know, we can do that if everyone's satisfied that they have all the information they need. Uh, well, I, uh, one more thing I want to say, with respect to the issue of that restrictive declaration, um, I don't think we have the power to consider that, um, honestly, because I don't think that's just a private agreement between two people. So it might allow the current owner to do something or the, you know, the owner of one of the two lots to do something, but I don't think it gives us any um, power to do anything. I don't think we... Um, can take into account the fact that there's a restriction that says one parcel can't do something without the consent of the other parcel. So um, anyway, so uh, anybody else on the board? Sorry, this is what I was saying before. What does anyone want to do then with this application? Do we want to close the hearing? Do we want to adjourn it if there's more information? I mean, someone? Meg, I can't hear you. I'm ready to close. You wanna make a motion then? I'm just, just looking for some acknowledgement that I'm everybody. Uh, I'll second it, Meg. Well, okay, then I make the motion to close. And, and I, Doug second, second. I okay. second the motion. Um, Meg. Yes. Doug. Yes. Greta. Yes. I mean, if you want, before we vote more, well, Greta, if there's information you think you want, we don't have to close it today. Oh, no, there's no, I am ready to close it. Okay, um, and Abby. Yes. And I vote yes as well, so um, this is closed. And again, we may decide tonight, we may not decide tonight. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do. About Thank you for your time.
So this is closed. Okay, uh, the public hearings are closed. We now have closed applications before us. Um, so Hampshire Club, renewal of special permit for um, host non-member events, 1SP 2014. So do, we don't even, have, we don't have a, so what does anyone want to do? Do anyone want to, to you know, my thought was that there's nothing different. We don't have anything while there's lots of issues relating to what a member event is and what a non-member event is and all of these things. They are not issues that are particular to this application. It's something the Board of Trustees really needs to deal with. It's clearly in the code. They've avoided dealing with this subject um, and they should deal with it. But given the information submitted, I don't know that we have a basis for denying it. So I would think we, we should approve it. Well, I, I guess my view is certainly, you know, the applicant has a right to rely on precedent. And the um, precedent is, you know, the interpretation that this board has had over um, a number of years. That being said, I, I just think the interpretation doesn't make any logical sense. Um, so I, I don't think we can just I mean, I, for me, I don't want to just rubber stamp and approve it in that I think there is a serious um, problem with the analysis, the interpretation of, of this, of this um, provision. So, so I, would, I would recommend that we um, give them an extension, but subject to, you know, but then go back to the board with um, a query on what the what they meant by member event, and then in in our resolution to say that if the board clarifies or changes the definition of member event, then you know from that point forward they need to apply by that standard. I think if the, co if the village changes and adopts a definition of these words that is inconsistent with the way the interpretation that would be needed to issue the special permit, then I think that the resolution would just say, you know, it would apply. I don't know that we have to say anything and I don't sort of want to put something into a, a resolution that deals with something that may or may not happen because that's true in every single application. Well, what, what can we do proactively to get clarification? It's not even clarification. I think the interpretation doesn't make sense. And I understand that that's how the board has historically interpreted it, but to me, it doesn't make any sense. So how, how can we proactively try to correct this? If, um, if, if the board, just, can you know, I, that a majority sorry, agrees, can I just... That it's a, so sorry. I just want to interrupt for a minute just to remind everyone that I am recused from Hampshire. So sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, Greta, I don't disagree with you. I think that this interpretation makes no sense because as long as you have a, under the definition as it is, as long as you have a member, they could, I, I could say I'm the sponsor and then I could invite nobody I know. So I agree um, with your problem, but I don't think that this is, I think what we have to do is what we talked about at the last meeting on this, which was to write a letter to the board and ask them to clarify these terms in the village code. I don't know if there's anything okay. else we can do. Okay, so can, how, when are we, you know, how, how would we do that? Would it, well, the that village would... planner circulated a draft letter, I don't know, a while ago. I don't agree, I mean, I have problems with that draft letter, but, um, but he did circulate something. So I guess what I would do is ask the village planner after this meeting to recirculate that draft letter and oh. um, we can make sure we take it up at the next um, meeting of the board. And we yeah. could even take it up in a work session if we want. I don't think it's, uh, since it's not something that requires a public hearing, when we have the next the work session at the end of September, we could take it up then. Yeah, we could do that. That draft letter needs to be modified before we get it. Exactly. Again. 
so we could take it up at that meeting. So why don't, is that all right? Does that, sorry, Doug, go ahead. That, that statement, antiquated and not changed, is not accurate. So that needs to be removed from there because modifications to the code have been made. We are looking at getting clear and concise definitions from the Board of Trustees so that we can effectively view applications the way we should. And I think that's what we need. Okay, so at the next, so let's have the, unless anyone disagrees, let's have the village planner recirculate that letter so everyone sees it. And then at the work session on September, whatever it is, we will discuss that letter. I thought it was October. No, no, we're having a work session. Yeah, you have a work session on September 24th. Okay. And um, give me one second. But just expand the purpose. There's no reason we can't put this and this to what we're doing there. Yeah. So on September 24th, you can have the conversation. You just won't be able to vote on the letter until your October 1st meeting. That's all. That's fine. And again, and the so letter was circulated. It was a draft. No problem. I'll recirculate it. And staff will make whatever corrections uh, you desire. That's fine. So let's do that. Okay. So now, granted, does that work for you? Does that work? Yes. Okay, so going back to this application before us, um, you know, that, uh, we do it. I think we issue these permits only for three-year terms, right? These special permits have only been issued for three-year terms, so we'd only be issuing it for three years. Um, so, because we want to continue to be able to control, you know, to rec monitor these. Um, so, uh, Meg, do you have anything you wanted to add about anything here? Sorry, because you have a... No, um, I had asked for the certification to come in for the um, corporation, because we had no names behind the corporation. Um, in the past, we've looked to see whether it's the members of the club or not, because it's supposed to be a member-managed club. But anyway, um, I got the certification today, I think. Just wanted to point out, again, that was not included, I think, on the agenda for the public meetings. We just gotta be careful that we're putting all the materials that we're getting onto the public meeting. I will say, I think there's been a little confusion because that was circulated by Betty Ann some, you know, back in, in August, in July, I don't know when, she circulated it at some point. And so I think there's been, because of the tra changeover from Betty Ann leaving and uh, uh, Will, you know, are the planner picking it up, I think that kind of, that has to happen better. I think there's just been some. I understand that. I just wanted to make the point again that we're talking about, you know, there was a piece that's not on the public agenda. I'm not suggesting it was a closed anyway. Just just pointing it out. Just pointing uh, thank it. you. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion on this application so we can move it along? Now again, going back to the what we've our new processes as of um, draft resolutions. Um, you know, are we going to vote on the resolution or are we just taking 10 to, to me, uh, this would be okay to vote on now because I think it's, you know, it's more boilerplate. We're really reissuing, renewing it on the same basis as the prior approval for the same term and no changes. And therefore, I think we can just do that now. Um, so I would make a motion that we approve the special permit renewal on the exact same basis terms and otherwise as the last special permit for the same three-year term. Not for the same three years, but for another three-year term. Because I do not, going through the findings in the special, although this one is a little different, basically there's been no changes that would require us to um, change and not issue the special permit. I'll second that. All right, anybody want to discuss it before we vote? Greta or Meg? All right, so let's vote. Doug? Yes. Greta? You're on mute, Greta. Yes. I'm Meg? Yes. And I vote yes, so this resolution is adopted. Same terms we don't need. This is actually voting on the resolution. Okay. All right, the next um, discussion is um, the draft resolution on 1I 2020, Tkirt 130 Beach Avenue. 
So at the last meeting, we took a tentative, we took a poll, and the tentative was to deny the, um, deny this, uh, he, had, he had filed five applications. He, um, we had determined to vote to deny. I've, I've got to them. recuse myself on this one. Oh, right. Sorry, Lori Lee, you're there, right? Okay. Um, so we had decided to, we had tentatively decided to um, approve, to deny four of the appeals and then file, um, and then request, and then approve the one that allowed the non-conforming use to continue once he corrects the, viol the, the violation, the violation that we would be finding and um, he did also ask about a special permit but he didn't file an application for a special permit so um, I don't think we can do anything about it but we can't grant a special permit where no application has been filed so I don't think we need to do anything about the special permit although I will say that I don't think there's a um, provision in the code that would allow special permit but in either case he didn't apply for a special permit. He did not file an application that covered what he would need to do to apply for a special permit. So I don't think we would need to consider it um, at all. Doesn't mean he couldn't subsequently file an application for a special permit, but at the moment, assuming there is one, but at the moment there was not before us. All right, um, who wants to discuss the resolution? I'm happy with the resolution as drafted with, I know Meg, you had submitted a slew of recommendations um, and I thought that one of your comments or maybe there were two of them that were correct and I would uh, go with the change wait I have to find it maybe how about not. if you're going to go to my letter why don't you let me present the letter then and then and the, and the I found as errors in the resolution there there were two factual errors that um, I, I think that's what the chair, chairman is talking about and they had to do with a um, uh, I was mistaken in adding that it was a, an attachment and an exhibit related to the plans for the 1986 Zoning Board Appeal. Can I, can I, can I have the floor for a moment? Yes, quite a lot of the resolution made the case that the applicant was denied um, the right to create a third dwelling unit that he asked for in 1986 and that it was the way the resolution is written, it doesn't just say it's attached. It says it um, actually supports the the conclusion, supports the code enforcement officer's conclusion that appellant had created an illegal fourth dwelling unit because he had gotten denied that. Um, and um, it's in several paragraphs, which I sent you to in a letter. Uh, heretofore, he, he put the kitchen and the electric in a Floor plan submitted to STEM in 1986, which were um, so that he created this kitchen that he had already shown the ZBA. So in very, very uh, dramatic way, that takes away a lot of the argument of the beginning of your resolution that he had gotten the deny to do what he uh, has configured the space now, and that's not the truth. So I just want to let the board members who might have not understood it after we all had our uh, findings last time, we never discussed it. We never went around and, and discussed again. I was surprised by how some of the conclusions that people had made. Um, what happened in 1991, that's before Mr. Teeker purchased it. It became a condominium. And you can see from the floor plans that the condominium had the doors and the walls in and the enclosed stairway at that time. So this was not all one project. In 1986, he wanted a different project. He was going to seal off the common stairway and create a third, a separate exterior entrance to the third floor. And he was also going to alienate the space so then it could be bought and sold and it could be occupied by an entire family of indeterminate size. That was what he was denied in 1986. He was in no way denied to set up the space the way it is used now or the way it's configured now. In after that 
uh, decision in 1980. Sometime after that not decision in 1986, we don't know for sure, but before, when it was declared a condominium, there is a floor plan that is like an as-built. It wasn't a, a, a wish list. It wasn't a plan to make it. It was the as-built. The as-built shows the stairways are enclosed. There is a door that's separating the third floor from the second floor. But then we realized that the electric, extra electric and the kitchen sink was put in after that. So this is not one hall project. We have a violation that says he had plumbing, electric and walls and doors and to create an unlawful structure. Well, those were done over time, a long period of time. Um, so um, I have, uh, I really think, I don't know how you're gonna change his resolution to take out the how many times you refer to what he was denied in 1986, because you're not describing what he was denied in 1886 um, clearly. Actually, you're, you're, you're referring to it incorrectly. Um, so you say in two places, but if you could tell me too, because I'll go through paragraph by paragraph where you have it incorrectly stated. I'm fine with the resolution as it is with the two factual errors that uh, Ms. Dixon has pointed out. So just just so let that the board know, the board members know this, I'm okay with it as it is. Um, Except so, you um, as other board members. Um, wish to add, this is particular for Abby or Doug because you are voting for the resolution and Meg was voting against the resolution. So um, Abby and Doug, are you okay with the resolution as is or do you want to incorporate any of Meg's uh, requested changes? Uh, um, I just have comments to the resolution as provided. Okay, and I need to talk to Lorelei about that. Okay, uh, Lorelei, I'm looking at Paragraph, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Paragraph seven, page two, it talks about complaint 1946-4658, alleging violation of 342 section C with the alteration of a non-conforming two-family use of the building without permits and approvals for use as a three-family dwelling unit. Okay. If uh, and you cited 342.64-C. 342.64-B states a non-conforming use of the building shall not change to another non-conforming use except where approved by the Board of Appeals after a finding that the change will be to a lesser non-conforming use and one will then be more harmonious harmonious with the area. The one you cited, if any non-conforming use of a building ceases for any reason for, for a continuous period of more than six months or, in or is changed to a conforming use, if the building in or out of which such is conducted or maintained is moved for, for any distance whatsoever. I, I need to know because uh, the allegation of 1965-58 was, wait, hold on. Yeah, that, I, that, I just want to make sure that C is the correct designation of that complaint. I, it says uh, complaint yeah. alleging, you know, complaint alleging, da, 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 al, al, uh, alleging violation of 342.64C with the alteration of the non conforming two family use of the building without permits and approval for use as a three family dwelling. Wouldn't that be B rather than C? Uh, I thought I took it directly. I'm just looking at the um, orders to remedy right now, the complaints. Which uh, Mr. Tickard had to actually attach. So I'm, I'm looking at the initial application.
um, it's 4650, 4658, 46, 44, 46, 55. Whoops, what happened? 40, oh, 46. Whoops, what happened to my meeting? Oh. There you are. Mm -hmm. 4657 and 4658. That's in order to comply. 4658. It's the, this is the allegation of a zoning cessation of non-conforming use. And it's, it says 64 dash C right in the complaint itself. No, I, 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 I okay, 64 dash C. That's what but, it says. If it, 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 it quotes it in the complaint itself, complaint 19 dash 4658. Uh, description of violation. Well, I'm just looking for it. Yeah, it's, what is the exact act? I'm, I'm trying to find it. 55. Yep, it, it, it's attached to Mr. Tikut's application. 50, 57, wait, I'm getting there. 58. 58, 58 and it says 64-C. If any non-conforming use of the building ceases for any reason for a continuous period of more than six months, blah, blah, blah. So I just took it directly from the face of the complaint itself. Okay, all right. At the premises here and after described that you have allowed or caused to allow zoning cessation of non-conforming use. Right. And uh, this was the complaint that the board felt they did not agree with the interpretation. They felt that they didn't want the non-conforming use to cease to the detriment of the other oh, property owners. We that don't want the non-conforming to cease because right. of this application. Right. All right. Correct. This okay. will give this well, will give the app the uh, appellant the ability to legalize or come into conformity, and it will not bring into um, jeopardy. All right. All right. That as, long, as long as the non-conforming of the existing building does not cease, that it has to return back to a single-family dwelling. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I, so I, I, took assume... it, I took it right from the face. Yep. All right. So I, that that goes along with your footnote five. Okay. Yes. All right. I didn't, I did not notice anywhere where you designated 342.64a to where you cannot expand a non-conforming structure. Okay. A non-conforming use. And the other one was, where was it? What was, I, I didn't have that as being the complaint. What is that on a, which complaint did that refer to? No, no, that would create, that would actually, you designate it as 364. Where, where, where do you have it? Okay. Um, where it, it's discussed to where the, 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 the third unit was added into the building. That would fall under 364. A, I think you designated it at 364, but that's okay. Um, hold on, I had another comment. Right, okay, here you go. It, I'm on, I guess, where am I now? Well, you have a, go to, um, I'm on actually one, two, three, four. I am on the fifth page. Okay, I'm there. Okay, it says under a dwelling unit is defined in the village code, yada, yada, yada. The occasional use by the tenant of the third floor, on the third floor of the stove on the second Perfect. floor. Okay. That has to go to second floor. Okay, and, and that was the designation of, of 364. Um, I, I wanted a clarification because I saw somewhere, oh, on the, on the last page, 
denies the application request for a special permit because there is no provision in the village zoning code or elsewhere to issue a special permit to legalize the appellant's alteration, which have resulted in the unlawful addition of a fourth non-conforming dwelling unit. Right. I understand uh, unit at the premises, okay. Um, you yes, um, the premises is defined at the top as, as that street address. The building as, as the entire street address. Right. But as we know, there the are build, three units, right. unit over the garage, and there the non-conforming portion of that is the two units that sit in the one building. It's hard to say, Doug, which is the non-conforming portion. The whole use is non-conforming. So right. it is a fourth unit. If you want to add something like a fourth non-conforming dwelling unit, we could uh, con you know, something about how consisting of the third floor well, yeah i mean because if, if you look at what it says deny the uh, request for a special permit because there is no pre really special permit to legalize appellant's alteration to unit b b which have resulted in an unlawful addition of a fourth non-conforming dwelling unit okay so the unlawful addition of a, a a third dwelling unit in the building resulting in four we're resulting in a fourth non-conforming in, in, the, in the unit B area, right? Or in, yeah, or in increasing, increasing the non-conformity by a dwelling unit at the premises. Right. Okay, and uh, unlawful addition of a third dwelling unit in the building, capital B, which results or I, you know, something to the effect of like subdividing unit B into a second unit to, to incorporate a third unit. Unless you think, Robin, what do you think? I think that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I don't, I mean, it doesn't raise an issue. It's clearer, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to continue the things that I find are inaccurate and ask questions of the people that are voting for this. Um, on page three, uh, the draft resolution state exhibit, it refers to exhibit one of the affidavit of the code enforcement officer. Um, in closing a previously open stairway and doors, all constructed and installed by alterations to the previous legal configuration of the without any permits. Does anybody know what time you're referring to? When was the previous legal configuration? Are you certain that um, we know in 1991 those walls and doors were there? Do you know what it looked like when it was a two family before STEM bought it? I don't know what you're referring to, that you have proof of when it was some other configuration and when it was open. Um, it just seems very unclear to just refer to that. I think uh, it works, just giving an answer from my perspective to that, I think it's very clear there was a variance denied to do something, which means at the time that the variance requested, it couldn't have been there. Well, when the initial variance was made, okay, and they were going to isolate that space, it was, they were going to seal off the steps and isolate that space, which meant that, hey, it wasn't isolated before, but this is what we want to do because we're going to create an entrance to the outside. So the only only egress, which clearly states that, hey, you know what? I'm going to put a wall up over here and shut that space out. Okay. So uh, we would argue whether or not because you put a wall in your space that you create an illegal dwelling unit. I um, think that's pretty far-fetched to me, but okay. But we are agreement that in 1986, he was denied the right to put the exterior entrance in and to seal off the doorway so we would have absolutely no um, access to the other, the rest of, of unit B. And he would have the right to rent it, to, uh, to sell it to another family. Um, the also references that Charlotte Mountain asserts the doors and walls were constructed and installed without any permits. Um, that she goes that there, she does, she said there were no permits filed. I think that it's clearer to state that this was, most of this was done 30 years ago, some decades ago, and that there are no permits or applications on file in the building department. Um, I don't believe that Ms. Mountain was around in the 1990s or any of the people, the nice staff that we have here now. 
Um, we know that the building department often misplaces files. This is when you're talking about paper files and folders. Um, it hasn't been able to provide the certificate of occupancy for the building. So I think it's much more accurate to say that they, are, they have not been found, but to assert that um, he never applied for them or no one ever applied for them, you don't have proof. You just, the only thing you know is that they're not on file now. Um, I'm okay with leaving it the way it is because to me, we often don't have people file and there's no record. I think we have nothing to go on except what's in the record. We have nothing to go on other than that. And I'm okay with, with saying, um, th if you want to say it otherwise, there is no evidence there that, um, Abby and Doug, there is no evidence that a, uh, build, a request for a building permit was ever filed. And we um, have, uh, you know, we have assumed that um, no building permit was ever issued. We know that, I'm happy with saying that if you would prefer, Meg, right. Abby Man. and Doug. May, may I say something? Uh, which, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I can tell you that um, I, I had Charlotte look at something and she investigated it. And I can tell you how thorough she is. She found building permits dated back to 1938 and 1968. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I know how thorough she is, and uh, I, I'm amazed that she even found anything from 1938, and, and I kept a copy of it. But it doesn't mean, it. Do, listen, the, the whole situation is, I think it needs to stay the way there is, because there is no building permit, and there is no C of O. Okay? I'm fine with leaving it the way it is, Abby. Are you okay with it? Uh, you know what? I... I do agree, I agree on this point with with Meg. You know, I do think there are, I, I do think for us to state unequivocally that no other approvals or certificates have been issued since 1986, given the holes in our records. It not and it has nothing to do with um, Miss Mountain. It's just you know. A, you know, again, it could be before her time. I, I feel it uncomfortable with that. So then, I would prefer okay. to move. It so the, why don't we say there's yeah, no I, evidence? Go ahead, Lori Lee, you have a suggestion? Yeah, I, I quoted directly from the affidavit. So if you want to soften this, you can say it indicates that that she found no evidence that permits it indicates rather than state. Well, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Abby, is that okay? So you're suggesting the mountain affidavit indicates that, that she could find no evidence. Of I'm okay anything. with like the mountain affidavit that says she could find no evidence. Okay. okay. I think that's accurate. I don't want to do indicates indicates versus says though. Unless she said that in the applicant, unless she said that in her affidavit. Yeah, I don't want to quote saying that she states she could find. I'll just say she, it indicates that she could find no evidence of any permit certificates or other approvals. Okay. Having, having been issued. Okay. On page four, you state that Mr. Steinclamp clearly maintains his own household on the upper floor and that provides complete housekeeping and sanitary facilities. And in somewhere else, you talk about the food consumption area. So and throughout this resolution, you are not stating that he has cooking provisions. Is that correct? The resolution is, is silent on whether or not there's cooking, bio, uh, cooking provisions. The is resolution that? says what it says. I don't okay. want to start interpreting it for you. I went through it very thoroughly. Nowhere are you stating that there are cooking provisions on the floor, and yet you're saying it's a dwelling unit. Okay? I have that clear. So without, despite the fact it has no cooking facilities, you're calling it a separate dwelling unit. I also wondered what you mean by he maintains his own household. What does that mean to maintain your own household? I, I'm and fine with leaving it the way it is. To me, it's very clear that someone could maintain their own household separate and apart from the uh, lower floor user. And therefore I think it's very clear. And um, in the application, I think it's clear exactly what was going on. I don't think it needs to be clarified. Well, that was, that, but that statement was made by Mr. Stamkamp. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah. And so, 
He, he was the one he was the one who said he lives separate and alone. I understand. I'm looking at the term and the language that you're using. I'm just saying, you're saying he maintains his own household and you're not describing what that is. I think it's fine. I'm okay with it. Abby, are you okay with it? Yeah. It says he has complete housekeeping and sanitary facilities separate and apart. That's 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 the cooking and the cleaning and the it is the cooking. Okay, because I don't anywhere else where it said cooking. It says food consumption area, which was a very interesting uh, prep. Yes, there's a table where he sits to eat. There's food preparation. Right. There's food. Why didn't you say food cooking there? If why do you say food consumption and not cooking provisions? I think I said food preparation. I, I was just trying to call from from the record. Let's see. Yeah. That. that yeah. Is it? Isn't yeah. that the record from Mr. Stamp, uh, the occupant? Yes. Right. What I'm saying is it says it's space okay. dedicated solely for the preparation of food for consumption by the occupant, separate and apart from appellant's cooking facilities on the first right. floor. Right. But I'm just pointing out you guys are not determining that there's cooking provisions by that, and that's required in a dwelling unit. If you think it means the same thing, that's your resolution. I think that you're avoiding saying whether or not there's cooking or not. Um, I don't think we need to make to say that specifically. I think it's clear that it was separate and apart, and that is adequate to make convey our point and what we are finding. A point that somebody is living apart from the person he's renting his house from, but you're not making a point that it's a dwelling unit. Um, I, I'm, I think we are making the point that it's a dwelling unit. I don't want to, I mean, we, we, discuss, we discussed that. We decided that at the last meeting, what you're trying to do, Meg, is have us reach a different conclusion now. We reached that conclusion. I don't, I'm not going back into, we're not going to go back into that conclusion unless the board members want to reconsider the substance of that resolution. If you do not want to reconsider the substance of the resolution, then we already determined that it was separate. Thank you very much, Robin. If I could just have another moment, I am almost done. I am making my comments because we are in deliberations. We are not, I know you voted, and I know this is- We did not vote, excuse me. We did not vote on this resolution. We took a straw poll. We did okay. not vote on this resolution. This is a completely a draft resolution. Okay. We didn't vote yet, so we're still deliberating. So yes, maybe I want people to change. Maybe I'd like to point out um, the false, uh, um, the errors and the things that are misleading about this resolution, because we did not vote. It is not- finished and we are we are deleting so i'm sharing my thoughts with you i understand um, and i was giving you my response on that thought at the bottom of page four the draft resolution states um that mr steinkamp occupies a, a rooming unit a term not defined in the code and that a rooming unit is not listed as a principal or accessory use and i would like to point out to whoever is listening that neither is a dwelling unit a dwelling unit is a building or a portion thereof. It's where the use happens, which in a single family home is a single family dwelling. That's the use. A dwelling unit is not a use. So, so to equate rooming unit, you can't find rooming unit and that makes it not permissible. We have nowhere have you explained in this resolution how a roomer or boarder can live in a space in this space. In, in a space with another family. Um, rumor and border is definitely a permitted accessory use. Um, why you have to point out that a rooming unit is not a permitted use, um, I think you're reaching. We do harmonize with other codes and regulations that we must abide by. The International Property Maintenance Code actually speaks about a rooming unit and the need for separation from a family in that case. Um, and the need for privacy, which would seem to me to speak to lots. So um, I think that this, that you're really going off um, in, in the wrong direction when you start to say that a rooming unit um, is not a permitted use. Um, also, and I'm almost done, so we'll get through this. Um, um, you talk about that the village code uh, states that can be read in context with other laws, but if there's a clear conflict um, than the terms of the village one. It stood there all by itself. Wasn't sure what you're referring to was the conflict. Um, but 
But if it's a conflict about the rooming unit, um, because there are no standards in the code for how the accessory use should be exercised, it doesn't put it in conflict. It means that this is being fleshed out in another body of regulations that we, the village must abide by. Um, also, in, at the end, you say that he should remove the illegal dwelling unit, and then he can keep his nonconformity, but you're not telling him how to do it. I cannot tell from this what he is supposed to do. He has the right to rent to somebody. What does he have to do to make this, in your eyes, not a separate dwelling unit? Okay. I think that's what the, build, the building department provides that. No, that's not what the building department decides, that we interpret the code. The building department doesn't interpret what well, does, does not make. The code. building inspector is charged with interpretation of the code in all instances. When the, when, the appellant, when the applicant came to us, we become the body to interpret the code. He was not satisfied with the building department. So you're going to ask the building department to do that, and then we'll get another appeal? from the applicant when he's not satisfied with what the building inspector says as, as to how to legalize it. You guys are avoiding, you're avoiding saying whether it's cooking or not. You're avoiding deciding what it exactly means to have a separate household. You're avoiding telling the applicant how he could legalize this unit. Um, you're alluding to some sort of improper use of this space, but um, it's a lot of illusions and not being very specific about it. Um, I also think that Robin said oh, um, that the applicant putting into his application that he would like to be considered for a special permit did not, did not, was not um, enough to say that he had applied for a special permit. Um, that was put into the resolution and I heard Robin, I didn't hear anybody else discuss whether or not they agreed with it. Nobody, it didn't come up about a special permit. I feel that the applicant asked to be considered for a special permit and he wrote it in his application. Um, was he supposed to put two applications in at the same time? Um, I, I haven't heard from anybody else. That seems like a bold statement to say that he did not apply for the special permit. Um, three comments on what Meg just said. First of all, you, rooming unit is not the same thing as a rumor. The terms are not the same. A rooming unit having the word unit on it makes it clear that it's completely separate. I have no issue. With respect to telling the applicant what he has to do. I don't think that's our job, and that's not what he asked. Third, with respect to the last question about a special permit, in order to apply for a special permit, and um, um, Meg, you would be multiple times you have indicated when applications were not complete. This is not a complete application. In order to apply for a special permit, you need to demonstrate, you need to provide what section it is, that's a requirement of our code, and you need to satisfy and demonstrate how you meet the findings for whatever section there is. He didn't do any of the above, and therefore this is not a complete application. If he wants to ask for a special permit, um, now he can certainly come back and tell us what section of the code he's applying for a special permit under and he can ask for a uh, provide all the findings that we need to make just like any other applicant for a special permit i would just like to say in his narrative that accompanied the application he referred to the part of the code that he would like to be considered for his special permit if you feel he did not give enough findings Okay, but he did refer to the section of the code that he would like to be considered for his special permit. Was not. I don't in, recall that. What section was it, Meg? I'd have to go back. I'll get his application up if you want to wait. It was in the narrative that he that he um, put considered in. for a special permit. Not okay. didn't he didn't ask for one. Considered, I think, is the terminology. But he did refer to the code that he would like it to be considered. Under. But he didn't. He also asked for interpretations of code sections of which we addressed, okay? You're feeling that it's not, not um, that doesn't pertain. We're, I'm just highlighting my difference with you and that I think that you're, you're going down the wrong path. Right. Yeah, well, he did not submit an application for a special permit, which is required. We don't require separate. He could have in connection with this application um, I don't know what section he referred to, so I can't answer, but he definitely did not submit an application for a special permit. We do not consider applications that have not been um, presented to us in full, and he did not do that. Okay. Um, I also find that your, your um, interpretation that the 
rumor has to be part of the same housekeeping unit as the family. I think you're misreading um, the definition of dwelling unit. In the definition of dwelling unit, there is a requirement that it provides complete housekeeping and cooking facilities for the family. And there's also a restriction that only one family can live there, not two families and three families or four families. Then you're also allowed accessory uses. You can have pets, you can have a home office, you can have a roomer or boarder. If the roomer or boarder can only exist there as part of the housekeeping unit, you have in effect nullified the right to have the accessory use. The, except the rumors and borders are separate from the family if they were supposed to be part of the family. Either that or you're writing a standard in for a rumor and border that is nowhere in the code. You're creating, you're creating law that's not there, that it has to be part of the housekeeping facility. So I think you're really misreading the definition of what is a separate dwelling unit. Um, listen, if we're going to go into this, and I really don't want to go into this. We discussed this all last time. We discussed everything, including the construction of a dwelling unit for Mr. Tickert's mother, a complete unit. That in itself. Okay, right now, would the building department, we can't ask, it's a closed, it's a closed uh, you know, hearing, but I wonder if the building department would get a CFO for that third floor without the cooking in it right now and sharing a common stereo with the other space. Would he say, oh yes, I'm going to make it, you know, the, the code change and now I can have three families. Would you get a CFO for that? I doubt that you think so. You can't share the stairway and you, can, you have to have cooking and both of them are missing. And I'm sorry that I'm talking about this. You guys are writing something that's gonna be a precedent for every, every property owner. Everybody who has a space in which they put a wall and a door that separates something. Everybody who has a guest, everybody who has a renter, everybody who has um, you know, people just staying with them and they have a wall and a, a, wall and a door and a separation you are, I think that you're going ahead and legislating and you're making um, a very dramatic precedent by this. Look, and everybody who puts in electric and everybody who puts in plumbing and everybody who puts in a kitchen, okay, they're, the code of the state of New York is very clear. It is a life safety code. So everything must be built according to the code, including- Absolutely right. Walls, that's why the applicant walls. listen i'm not going to get into it we went no, I, i'm going to point out i'm going to point out that the applicant actually has had a licensed electrician and a, a licensed plumber check out the work and submitted it to the building department and the building department although you're saying that it's a health and safety issue has dragged on it and has not acted upon it did not go a, i'm sorry a life safety just, issue they did Let not me finish, Doug, and then you can go back and talk. It is a health and safety issue. Um, I don't know whether the applicant, they just lost the permit or not, but the applicant did try to remedy it, just like other people do when they can't find the building permit. He did get, in the fall, he got a licensed electrician to submit work and certify it was okay, and a plumber. <laughs> the building department leaves it blank. If it's a health issue, why is the building department not acting upon that? and certifying that what they've received is okay. Why can you not get those remedies? The applicant is not trying to avoid that. Actually, didn't, he didn't challenge those two violations. So there was no, nothing in the record I'm about it. He didn't challenge those. I am talking right. to Doug's point that it's a health and safety issue. In terms of the health and safety issue, the applicant has already done his very best to comply. But you, you're adding facts into the record that are not in the record. How do you know the applicant no, went? He put it in his narrative again. He did sell tell us. He did. So if you want me to go back, I am very careful before I say these things. I will go and find them if you want. But he told us that he has submitted information to the building department for that. But it's not under our jurisdiction. I just can't stand silent when Doug is saying that there's a health and safety issue that the applicant is avoiding. And the applicant told us that he has had licensed people it out. First of all, Meg, you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say he's avoiding them. Okay. I did not say that. Okay. So there are issues here. Firewalls, rated walls. Are they built? Tell me. 
you can't answer that. The building department has to answer that. Okay. Right. An application needs to be submitted detailed to the code that is in effect at the time, which in this particular application is 2015. So no, if the, no, the, 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 a second. No, the, the walls of the what built year was built. They were built in 1990. It they is were. irrelevant. It is irrelevant. It the violations were cited in 2015. The 2015 building code is the code that stands. Even That's though you built it, even though it's for a structure building. It like doesn't that. matter. It's 2015. That is what the code is. Frank, yeah. you're sitting right there. He can't answer. He, this is a he hearing that's closed. The 2015, what? this is a violation of 2015. There are no records to say any of this stuff was done and looked at and accepted prior to, prior to 2015. The building code of 2015 is the code that is applied. Right, but did you look at the condo declaration floor plans? It's dated 1991 by an architect. It shows the walls and doors in place. So unless he took them out and then put the same walls and doors back again. Speaker actually told us that he'd had those walls constructed because he was afraid it was a chimney effect. I don't he know. He told what, us that. But read he out, read here, here. You would you like me to read the statement? Dead in the can I've gone over this really closely. Yeah, the please read it, Doug. If you have it there. If you have it, if you don't have it, don't bother. I, I, I'd have to go through all of the paperwork that's sitting here, but I know that Mr. Teeker, in one of his statements, said he constructed those. I just read, I got to find it, okay? The walls were constructed because it was a chimney effect, and he wanted to close those spaces off. I'll find it. You can look for it. I know he said that. I'm not doubting you that he said it. I do know that when he first put in his application, he thought he he said that he had put those walls and doors in for his mother, and he corrected it the next time he was before us. Wait, and wait, hold on a second, please. It is right here on page one. I made modest changes to dwelling unit 30 years ago to make it safer prior to my mother moving in. In the original design, my dwelling unit had an open two-story stairwell that could act as a chimney promoting the spread of fire and would allow a person to fall into open two-story shaft. I put up walls on the unprotected side of the stairwells to mitigate these problems. I also placed two doors on the second floor landing, one into the second floor living space and another one into the third floor living space that not only promote privacy, but also promote privacy, right. but also to and deter the December, spread of fire. And in December, then in December, when he came before us in December, he corrected himself and he realized he definitely did the sink and the electric for his mother, but he corrected himself, Doug, and it's a part of the record that the walls and doors were there in 1991. It's certified with the Westchester County floor plans, though those walls and doors were there. I mean, look, if we're going to go in and start rehashing this whole thing over again. No, we don't have to. Us, I'm not. Hold on. In January, I'm sorry, I think it was in January, he came to us and told us that Mr. Stancap leaves alone up in that apartment and right. he doesn't cook. He only needs a hot plate. Then all of a sudden in March, he comes, well, yeah, he comes and uses my stove. I don't need to, I don't, I, 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 I'm sorry. I was going very carefully through the resolution there. I think that you're writing a resolution that has uh, factual errors and is alluding to things that are not. Um, I don't need to go over the whole thing. I do have a dissenting opinion that Greta and I would like to submit to be part of the record. Um, we do not think it's appropriate to attach it to any sort of resolution, but would like to be able to read it in. And I would like to know when is the best time to read it in. I guess it's after we take a vote, we all vote, and then we will read our dissenting opinion into the record. I think when you dissent from the vote, then you would read your, your dissenting okay. opinion into the record. Time to do that then, and you'll hear the rest. Um, Abby, do you have anything to discuss, say, ask, whatever? Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that when Ms. Mountain was talking to us, she did say very clearly that um, removing the lock would remedy the illegal situation. So um, I'm not really clear where we stand with all of this now, but, um, you know, looking at two on page six, um, as long as the applicant remedies the illegal alterations and removes the separate dwelling unit, 
he retains his non-conforming use status. Um, I just want to be clear about what that entails because that sounds a lot broader than what she had um, told us. So yeah, and I, I guess, guess would, I just would caution that you provide a roadmap. Really, that is, I, I know that Meg disagrees with me, but really that is the role and function of the building department because they know the codes inside and out. And it may take a number of steps to either remedy or legalize or whatever it is, and there may be options for him. This, this, uh, this if you should uh, adopt this as your resolution, it does not foreclose him from continuing, but, uh, to put you into a position of giving him that roadmap um, is a very dangerous precedent to set because then everyone would come to you to get that which they could not get directly from the building department. And, and you know, you don't know the codes as well, all of the codes of the various safety and fire codes, and they change, you know, regularly. So I just would caution, we can, we can clarify that, um, that, you know, that he needs to remedy um, the illegal alterations and and rem remedy the illegal alteration and the existence of the separate dwelling unit. Right. You know, and Abby, you're right. And one of the things that should be specified is that it's per the 2015 code, not the 2020 code that came out this year. Well, actually, why wouldn't it be the 2020 code? Because, um, wait, wait, Doug, let me ask the question. If he went to get a build, building permit, he would have to get the, right, the fact that he did something illegally, if you could do construct something illegally, then you get no rights with respect to what you constructed. So if he's submitting an application for a building permit today, we, he would have to be considered today when he submits the building permit application, not when the violation was issued. The violation is not related to the need for a building permit. If he needed a building permit, he needs a building permit now, which means compliance with the current code, the code in effect at the time he submits the application. That's how it should be reviewed. So I'm not right. sure even, that it even, is. Even, even in that, Robin, if he goes to the building department and they provide him with a remedy, okay, then that would be the cure. I'm not arguing with that. If the building department says something, then, then I'm not going to, you know, I don't know what the building department's going to say, so I can't say whether mm -hmm. it would or would not be adequate, but, um, but, but I don't think we want to say anything because I don't agree that it's the 2015 code. I think if he needs a building permit now, it would be the code in effect at the time he applies for it. The building permit not when the violation was issued because that relates to the condition then it relates to what his building permit application is for okay no but as long as if he goes to the building department and they present him with a remedy potentially and it's whatever not, if, if the building department not, tells him what he has to do right, he can either actually not a you got to do this in accordance to this, okay? If they present him with a remedy, okay, then that would be different. Okay, I agree. So, I'm sorry, uh, Abby, you, you were talking. Abby, oh. I can read to you what I've changed it to, and then you tell me if it's acceptable, okay? Um, the entire uh, sentence says, it approves the appeal um, as it relates to complaint 194657 and disagrees with that the building has lost the status for use as a two-family residence and decides that as long as applicant remedies the illegal alterations to eliminate the separate dwelling unit, he retains his non-conforming use status. As long as he remedies the illegal alterations to eliminate the separate dwelling unit, he retains his non-conforming status. Lori Lee, can, is that okay, Abby? Yeah, um, yeah, that that is that is a that is a bit better. Um, I think my other question, you know, just because I do want to be very careful about this before we we close this off, is for Will. I would 
like to hear from him how the other places he's worked at have handled similar situations. We can't, again, mm -hmm. that would be um, public hearing information. We uh, can't get additional okay. input. Yeah, the record's, the record's closed, yeah. Ah, got it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, Lori Lee, can you read, go through the, in the resolution, can you go through the changes that you made so we have them all um, before us? Uh, sure. Um, I, I put um, in, in the third whereas clause uh, that prior to the condominium conversion, I said the last sentence is, um, by separating the two floors of the duplex apartment, now unit B, into two separate dwelling units to be offered for sale. That, that assists with Meg's understanding that that, though, that application was to create two units to be offered for sale, separately for sale. So that clarifies that. I've, I've taken out the um, reference that I was mistaken, um, that the plans that were attached to Miss Mountain's affidavit were the floor plans that are on file with the county and not the plans that were attached to the 1986 application to create that separate dwelling unit. So I removed a refer the reference there to that. Uh, I have, I have I'm moving on to the next page. Um, I have said that the mountain in the first bullet point um, on, on page four, the first bullet point I said the mountain affidavit indicates that she could find no evidence of any permit certificates or other approvals having been issued by the building department for unit B since 1986. So I took out states and put it indicates. Uh, she stated there were no permits, but we soften that. Um, and then I said in that 2004, um, in five. But just uh, to clarify, hang on one second, just to clarify something, Abby, that's what the affidavit states, that right. there were none, whether or not um, it, it I, No, I understand that, but I think given- That's fine, given I just- The it was the evidence, I okay. feel like that's, you know- okay. That's I fine. Think that's that. fine. Okay. Um, Soften that. And then um, in the section we just uh, changed, um, that would be the um, be it resolved point two. We've said that um, we disagree with the, that the building has lost the status for use as a two family residence and decides that as long as the appellant remedies the illegal alteration to eliminate the separate dwelling unit, he retains his non conforming use status. And then yeah, I would just like to make one comment um, about this last provision, which I think Abby was right, was really vague, didn't provide any, you know, doesn't provide any sort of guidance to the applicant on how we can fix this. The, you know, the building department had, through Ms. Mountain, had indicated very simply and emphatically how it could be fixed by fixing the locks. And Abby seemed to agree with that in her analysis. But by being silent on this issue, you know, what we're gonna have is a continual ping pong, ping pong with this um, matter that's gonna go on for months and months and months, which I don't think serves the um, purpose of the applicant, the building department, the village, or this board, given, um, I, I think there's nothing wrong with saying if the, you know, if the board if the majority agrees that fixing the locks will fix this, they're just agreeing with the interpretation as articulated by the code enforcement officer, and it will resolve the matter much more quickly. Um, and I, I, with all due respect, Laura Lee's arguments about changing laws just are not compelling. And the compelling interest is really to put this, put this to bed. And um, Abby, if you think that fixing the, the locks are going to resolve this matter, then let's just get it done with and give that type of 
guidance to the applicant, but also to to the village and other people who want to have rumors and borders. I don't want to. Let me explain why I don't think we should do that. First, there's no we. It's not our job to tell, and, and we said this specifically a couple of months ago on a completely different application. We said it wasn't our job. Oh, I think it was on that. Um, three, the subdivision of three units, and he wanted to know what he had to do in order to, to legalize or get whatever. And we told him it wasn't our job to tell him what he had to do. So for, I don't want to start telling people what they have to do. Second thing is, I don't know whether or not I would consider that just removing the lock is adequate. I don't know if there's any other building code issues that got raised, just because they didn't get raised before us doesn't mean there aren't any. I don't know what's there. I don't know the full parameters of possibilities, the full gamut of what needs to be reviewed. So I would be loath to say, to tell him what he has to do. You know, well, what we're gonna get is, this is gonna last for years because the board has not come to a consensus of what constitutes a dwelling unit. You're punting it back to the to the building department and it's gonna be punted back and forth. And um, we're not serving um, any, you know, the purpose of um, what we're supposed to do in terms of interpreting a um, appeal on what the, what the interpretation of the law is. We're just, um, I don't think, just one thing, if we don't make the decision, as I think we shouldn't, and um, the building inspector determines that he has to just take the lock off, we're not going to have this before us. There's going to be, and right. he takes the lock off, there's no right. issue before us. It's not going to come back in the absence of somebody appealing something. I see no reason to assume it's ever going to come back once Frank to, unless the applicant disagrees with the remedy provided by the applicant. And again, I don't want to do this, but, but I don't know that there, it would ever come back to us just because we don't give it or tell him what to do. It, it, it really needs to build, be a building department decision. They need to review it with the applicant and say, this is it, done, okay? Um, will it come back? I don't know. Well, I mean, I can't answer if it will come back or it won't come back because it depends on whether, you know, there is an issue. But I do know that we are being, we are taking steps to clearly get the, the definitions that we absolutely want to know so that we can make better decisions. And we are going to take the letter that William wrote and we are going to modify it put in what we want, what we need these definitions on, and submit it to the Board of Trustees. And that will help us in the future on making determinations. But we should just let, let the building department put the remedy with, with Mr. Teeker and let it be handled in that fashion. Um. All right, well, I move that we adopt the resolution as, unless Abby, you have, do you want to say something? Okay, I move that we adopt the rest of the draft resolution as um, the resolution as drafted with the amendments and with the edits um, that Lori Lee read to us this morning and that we approve that resolution as edited. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second. Okay, um, so we can vote on this. Abby. Yes. I'll make it simple. Doug. Yes. Meg. No. Okay, Greta. No. No. Okay, do you want to read? I know you, you want to read your dissenting now, Meg, please? Because yes. this would be the time to do it. This is why you're, like, this is why you're dissenting. Okay, and this is why we're dissenting. And I just want people to know I'll send in a copy of this. I'm reading it in, in but if don't have to furiously take notes because I'll be sending this in. Uh, just to clarify something yeah, so I've learned since then, to be just to clarify to something, we cannot, we cannot issue 
um, the resolution can't contain a written dissent. So there's, you don't have to send in a of written thing not. because- not, We don't want it, of course not. No, no, Meg was saying she'd send but in a I written one, but what I'm saying is, is we don't, it's not like it can be submitted. What you read is read into the record and then that becomes part of the record, whatever the record, whatever one calls it. But there's no, we can't, can, you can't submit, even if you, whether you'd wanted to, so submitting a written one, um, I don't know that you need to, just, just to clarify that, that was all. Uh, well, no, I think Robin, um, I believe, and I'm not 100% on this, but I believe when you read in your dissent for a prior um, application, it was part of the minutes. Correct, and that's what this would be, part of the minutes. I don't disagree with that. That's okay. exactly what okay. I'm saying. So I'm just checking. But I'm just saying that okay. we can't, I thought when I did that at the other application that we could have an, the reason I submitted it in writing or plant, you know, was because I thought that the written statement would then be part of the sort of the resolution would contain both the pros and the anti. And I have subsequently learned I can't do that. So, um, in fact, I can't do that. You can only read it in to have it be part of the minutes. So that's what, um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. And then that's all we will all we see. Okay. Ready? So this is the dissenting opinion um, for the 130 Beach Avenue application that Greta and I would like to include into the minutes. The property owner of 130 Beach Avenue is appealing five violations issued by the Village of Maranick Building Department based on the department's determination that the third floor is currently configured constitutes a separate dwelling unit. It is well established that zoning regulations are in derogation of property owners' rights to the use of their property. A property owner's rights enjoy the most protection under common law and state and federal constitutions, and New York State state courts have regularly and consistently held that any such zoning codes and regulations must be strictly construed, and any ambiguity must be construed against the municipality and in favor of the property owner. The applicant asserts that Village Code Section 342-21.B6 permits him to share his property with up to two rumors and borders in accessory use, and that there is nothing in the code that prevents him from assigning specific rooms in his condominium for the private use of a rumor. In other words, the fact that the rumor is living a separate lifestyle from the applicant in a space assigned for his exclusive use does not by itself turn that segregated space into a separate dwelling unit defined by the code. The applicant further asserts that the third floor lacks complete housekeeping facilities as it does not contain a stove or oven. Village Code 342-3 defines dwelling unit as a building or entirely self-contained portion thereof containing complete housekeeping facilities for only one family, including any domestic service employed on the premises and having no enclosed space other than vestibules, entrance, or other hallways or porches or cooking or sanitary facilities in common with any other dwelling unit. It is clear from this definition that the third floor of Unit B of 130 Beach Avenue does not constitute a separate dwelling unit as currently configured. Number one, the space shares a common stairway that serves all three floors of the unit and a dwelling unit is not allowed to share enclosed spaces other than vestibules, entrance, or other hallways or porches in common with any other dwelling unit. Number two, the space does not contain complete housekeeping facilities as it lacks a stove and oven and so does not include complete provisions for cooking. Although not explicit in the village code, the fact that complete cooking facility requires a stove and oven is made clear in the uniform building code in which states, um, excuse me, um, a single unit provides complete independent living facilities for one or more per persons, including permanent provisions for living, sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation. Sorry. Um, um, also that it's not explicit in the code, but it is clear that the International Property Maintenance Code um, states that uh, devices such as coffee pots and microwave ovens shall not be considered clear permanent provisions for cooking and so are not allowed in rooming units, which is what is happening here. Um, sorry, I had a footnote because I thought I could send in my paper. Um, and also the applicant, uh, and by the president of the village uh, building department. On the CO for 1330 Mamaroneck Avenue, the village building department indicated that the premises had switched from a two family to a single family home by the single action of unplugging the stove in one of the two kitchen areas on the premises. 
Any, consider is there any consideration of whether the need for a permanently installed stove or oven is outdated and tabletop appliances are now sufficient for cooking is a legislative issue for the Village Board of Trustees. The ambiguity the board has clearly identified and discussed during the review of this application requires complete help must be found in favor of the applicant under constitutional law. During the board's deliberations on this application, it was proposed that as a dwelling unit contains complete housekeeping facil facilities for only one family, and the definition of family in section 342-3 of the village code is one or more persons occupying a dwelling unit and living together as a single housekeeping unit in a familial relationship or not more than two unrelated persons living together as a single housekeeping unit, that this somehow means that rumors or boarders may only occupy the space if they join the one permitted family as a single housekeeping unit. The reading of this code conflating one, the need to provide complete housekeeping facilities with two, the restriction of only one family per dwelling unit rather than two or more families, um, to then mean that a rumor cannot live separately from the family is wrong for the following reasons. The village code considers rumors or borders to be an accessory use and so must be a use that is exercised outside the principal use which is the occupation of the space by one family. A requirement that a room or a border must be conjoined within the family housekeeping unit and is not allowed to maintain separate living arrangements would effect effectively nullify the accessory use. No standards are provided in the code regarding which facilities may or may not be provided a room or a border, what the obligations of the room or a border has towards the family, or the configuration of the space inside the unit assigned to the room or a border. In the absence of any standards or intent accompanying the accessory use in the code, it is not within the jurisdiction of this board to determine that the room or border cannot live in a set of rooms that have been assigned for his or her exclusive use apart from the family, or that the rumor must participate as a member of the family's housekeeping unit. International Property Maintenance Code defines rooming unit as any room or group of rooms forming a single habitable unit occupied or intended to be occupied for sleeping or living, but not for cooking purposes. And section 404.1 of the International Property Maintenance Code states dwelling units, hotel units, housekeeping units, rooming units, and dormitory units shall be arranged to provide privacy and be separate from the other adjoining spaces. This is a requirement that the rooms the applicant provides a rumor must be separate and a lock on the doors in keeping with providing privacy. As the board has no jurisdiction to enforce standards other than those specified in the code or other pertinent related laws and reg regulations, it cannot require rumors and boarders to share meals, other household activities, or coexist as a single housekeeping unit with the principal use family occupying the dwelling unit. Under constitutional law, any ambiguity regarding standards for rumors and boarders, including the relationship to the principal family, must be construed in favor of the applicant. Finding that the third floor space is currently configured is not a separate dwelling unit would not conflict with this board's denial of the STEM application in 1986 for a use variance to create a fourth condominium unit on the third floor of Unit B. The plans submitted in 1986 for altering the third floor space are not comparable to the current configuration or use. The 1986 request included a plan to seal the common stairway and install a separate exterior entrance to the space as described in the letter STEM Council submitted to the board, which the Village board Building Department provided in its file for this application. The 1986 request was to alienate the space so that it may be sold as a separate dwelling unit and thus could be occupied by a single family of indeterminate size plus up to two rumors and borders. As such, approval of that request would have had significant impact on the number of people allowed to occupy the premises. In comparison, the applicant's current exercise of the permitted use to share the unit with up to two rumors and borders has far less impact on the potential number of individuals inhabiting the space. Complaint number 194655 combines building code violations with the zoning code violation in determining that the applicant built an unlawful structure. The third floor of Unit B does not be the, meet the definition of a dwelling unit and under the village zoning code it is not an unlawful structure. Complaint 194656, the enclosing of a stairway and addition of interior doors with locking hardware does not constitute the construction of a dwelling unit. The third floor space lacks complete housekeeping facilities and shares a common stairway with the rest of Unit B. Complaint 194657, the applicant has not built a separate dwelling unit and a certificate of occupancy resulting from change in use is not required. Complaint 194658, the applicant has not altered a two-family dwelling to a three-family dwelling and the non-conforming use has not ceased. Complaint 194667, the two-family dwelling has not been altered to create a three-family structure. And that's the end of my, Alfreda's my dissenting opinion. You're on mute, Robin? Yeah, 
Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Um, um, and I vote to approve the resolution as well. Um, so we're done with this. This has been approved. There has been a dissent. Um, and we're done with this. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. I've now lost my, oh, there's my agenda. Um, this is um, application 31A 2019, Dominic Brescia for Capetta 172 East Prospect Avenue. Before we start discussion of this, I have two things I want to say. First, just to make it clear what's happening here. At the last meeting, the July meeting, the board vote had a draft resolution before it. The draft resolution was then edited. Everybody, various members of the board made comments, made edits. Um, I asked several times if anybody else had anything else to say. No one else made any changes. And the board then voted on a resolution that was specifically pending before it, and the board approved that resolution. Uh, some of the board members now wish to change that resolution, and I guess it's been determined by council that this is, I don't know, an amendment or a modification, and therefore it's okay. But the discussion here today is of an amendment to an adopted resolution. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to say, it has to do with a member of the public submitted a letter to the uh, village, to, to, to uh, the other members of the zoning board, did not include me on that application, in which this member of the public said that I had behaved in an improper ex parte communication with respect to this application, which is why I'm raising it now, because it had to do with this application. I would like to say very clearly, I had never, I have never had any discussions with the attorney for the applicant, um, with the attorney for the applicant, uh, except to the extent that the applicant appeared at the board. In fact, I've never had an ex parte communication with any attorney for or any other applicant uh, on an application that was pending before the board. So I want to clear that up so that there's no question. And I suggest that in the future when people um, have a think that something bad or wrong has happened, they should make sure they check that their facts are accurate. In this case, what appears to have happened is that the village council erroneously meant to say multiple telephone calls with these people, not one single telephone call. So I'm clearing that up. There was no illegal ex parte communication and I'm able to vote on this and uh, say anything else I wish to say and there's no issue. So now let's open the, the thing for discussion that, that you want to make. You, want, you wanted to make these changes, so please discuss. Um, well, actually, this is um, the text that I see in front of us is one that um, I have read and I approve. Um, it was fleshing out what we had discussed at the meeting. Um, I'm not sure what you want me to say. I just want to say that what we have in front of us is not a complete application. It's the body of the findings. It doesn't have the preamble. It doesn't have the names of the votes. It doesn't. It didn't come to us that it normally does for a variance. The the lapse variances was already voted on and filed. So this is now a separate resolution. And so I'm not sure why we don't have it in totality. Well, I'm not. I'm not. That's not correct. We voted on both the variance for fast and affordable for fair and affordable housing as well as the um issue of the lapse permit we voted on that resolution at the last board meeting we had a resolution in front of us that's not what's in front of us now we have a slightly different um sub language in the uh, area variance application for fair and affordable housing units. this is not what was presented either what was presented at the last board meeting the draft resolution or the edits that were made at the board hearing, specifically the edits that were made to that resolution. So this is a slightly different resolution. So this is not what was adopted by the board. So well, if we it, want to, so you know, what you're asking. It was unclear to me. It was unclear to me that we were, we had voted on a final resolution. My understanding was that it was, um, it was, we were voting on what we, we were talking about the language and we were going to settle on the final language um, at the next meeting and vote on that final language. So, I mean, 
maybe you're right, Robin, but that certainly wasn't clear to me at that meeting. And, and Christy, my, had, my understanding is we were still negotiating the language. Um, just to clarify that, we voted. We don't vote just for the future so that this is clear in the future. Um, we don't vote, take a vote. All we do is say a straw poll that was, we actually voted that vote. If you go to the hearing on this, if you go to the public hearing, you will see that there's a vote on the resolution. So we did vote. So I know that the conclusion was reached by council that we could do this. So I'm not arguing with that decision. I'm not okay. changing that decision. All I'm saying is the language that is, that is in this resolution as submitted today differs from the language in the draft resolution together with the edits that was specifically made at that last board meeting that and that was okay, voted I, on and that's know, fine i'm not saying I anything else that to be the case what i'm just saying that i didn't understand you know that was understood we'll be clear we'll make sure that at that time. understood so you think we okay. didn't vote on it last time uh, Matt, greta are you saying that yeah. you think so, i mean i so yeah so i i like i I like this language. I think it's excellent. Um, I, I know that Meg worked many hours on it. And I want to thank Meg for her hard work and for the hours she did to really um, tighten this up and make this a stronger resolution. Thank you. Meg, did you want to say something? What I wanted to ask was, is this going to be inserted into the resolution that was already filed? Because I received as a secretary the lapse one and I signed it and sent it back and I thought Betty Ann was going to file that. So I'm just tactically, what is going to happen to this text if it doesn't, if it isn't a separate resolution from that one? Well, I, I think this is a question for Mike. My understanding was that we were not voting on this resolution because we'd already voted on it. And all that was happening was that the language was being revised, modified, amended. I don't know the appropriate word. Something was happening with the language, but the vote. If Greta thinks, and, and I, I'm not putting words in your mouth, I think what Greta said is she didn't think we actually voted on the resolution final vote last time. And I'm asking council because this is, we really need to know and also to go to Meg's point, we need to know what's happening now. Are we just sort of um, amending, editing, revising some language in, an, in a resolution that was already adopted? Or are we actually now voting on this for the first, uh, first time is the right thing. But, but this is the first time we are finally voting, excuse me, on the resolution. Or, I'm sorry, and a third choice. Okay. That simply, we don't need to revote. We're simply codifying we're all just uh, making sure that we all are in agreement that this, this represents our findings and this becomes a different resolution from the other resolution that was already filed. So we can't, we can't write, we're not writing it. We can't have a different resolution. That's definite. If we're gonna have, we, there's no way to have two resolutions on the same application. Okay, so okay. I, I, it's just the one I signed and I sent back to Betty Ann, didn't mention. Correct. Didn't mention this, didn't have any text in it, it didn't have the old text, didn't have anything. It wait, wait, what resolution did you sign that didn't have text? When I signed it, it had, there was language that we'd seen. I didn't see anything about the first, it was just the lapsed variance. That's um, I could be if that's, if the, uh, so in that case, that would imply that we didn't vote. So, uh, Mike, this is really a question for you. I mean, this is really a, it's a I mean, we need a legal, an answer to this question. Is it A, the resolution, are we actually now adopting the resolution for the first time? B, is it somehow a separate resolution that's separate and apart? So we have two variance resolutions, um, which I don't see how we can do. So I don't think it can be a separate resolution, but going to Meg's point, was the other one filed, which would be the question to answer. So what exactly has happened or what are we doing today? Uh, when I spoke to Christy, I was under the impression that we had already voted on it and that this was amending language that would be appended to the back of the pre previously voted on resolution. Was the prior resolution filed with the county as it's required to be? I would have to check with, with, with Christy and see what happened with that. She, okay. I'm um, not sure right now. I don't think, Meg, since you're raising a, a very good issue, was it voted on? And we don't know the answer to this. I don't think we can vote on this today. Honestly, 
Um, we don't know what we're voting on, whether we're voting on a separate resolution, whether it was ever filed in the first place, whether we're voting on the first resolution, whether we're voting for the first time. Um, and oh, can I, um, yeah. I could be wrong. So I'm sorry, I was going by memory. What I was sent, I see um, application and it says lapse variances. I see a document, I'm looking at it, and it says, um, it talks about um, the lapse variances and then it goes on to extending the variance for the FAR, those two decisions, those two votes on this page, and there's nothing else after it. So I have that assumption that it got filed and it's not, and that this one will then be appended to that document is absolutely fine. So, but wait, if we, if, if all that was on there and I don't have it and there's too many emails in my to, to look, but if we only voted, i.e. if you only signed, or presumably that's what I only signed, we only voted on, that was the lapse variance um, issue, Meg, you were just talking about? Lapse variance is whether or not they had the best- lapse. Lapse. Right. If and that's going to extend it, if since it, you, we had decided that, yeah, yeah. right. But but it's the last part of it, not the area variance for the fair and affordable housing. Right. I think I we thought, cannot vote. I think we can't do anything on this until we have an answer to the question of what did we do last time and what are we doing today? Was an okay. application? Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, aren't we? I mean, others feel, I, I think we took the straw poll, but I don't think we actually voted. That's I think we actually voted. There was a motion. There was a second. I think it was did. voted. But I, we don't know. And the point is, we don't know. That, that's all I'm saying. We don't know for sure. I think it's different. You think one thing happened. Um, I think something different happened. And to know what we're doing today, we have to know what we did then. So I think we can't make this decision today. I'm looking, I'm looking at an email that came from Betty Ann to all of us on August 13th. Please see the attached adopted resolution for your files. This is the one for the lapse and the extension. If that's all that was in there, then it seems to me that we didn't vote on this, yes, but that is not consistent with my recollection and actually isn't consistent with I thought what Christy had said that we did in fact vote on it but that there was some edits to the language if in fact we didn't vote on it that's very different and, and I don't know what we did um, and what was filed um, I'm going to go look at that August 13th email from Betty Ann if I can find it um, and so we both signed it you signed it and I signed it no no I understand that what I'm saying is I have to go see what happened. Um, oh, I remember what happened now. I do remember, but I didn't focus on it. And I think I know, although, wait a minute. Sorry, I'm in the wrong. Yeah, it was, was urging to get clarity on those uh, pieces of it. And, and had asked that that could be filed. But this is not. Sorry, I'm looking for. Um... Yeah. As I recall, what happened is after the meeting, the last meeting, the, the, the July meeting, um, Christie circulated a resolution. And um, Meg, you had a lot of comments to it, or some comments to it, doesn't matter. You had comments to it. And um, we weren't resolving them, but we voted on this. We kind of recorded this piece. We filed this piece, the piece that it was, I think that's what happened, right? You know, thinking back now that we, we um, you raise it. I think that, oh, so what I started to say is, I think that what happened is you had raised some of these issues and um, uh, well, actually, she I wanted to, Betty and wanted to make sure that we could, or because the, that, that certain, that the part that was no issue about, we, record you know we got done and was done with so um although i don't see that 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 issue but um but um, our signature pool. i just want to clarify that when we voted christy Ron, i sent it to you when we voted christy said i still want to flesh it out i'm not comfortable with what you told me and we asked the three of us 
who would be the point person to discuss with Christy, and Abby and Greta agreed that it would be me. So there really definitely was an agreement that even though we had voted, we were going to continue to flesh out the language. And then there just became, after we had fleshed it out, um, I think you had some reservations that we had gone too far, but definitely when we took the vote in the meeting, Christy said, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna work with Meg as a representative of the people voting a certain way um, on fleshing out what your findings were. And so there was always the intent to flesh out the findings and refine the language. As I recall, it wasn't, at least not, not what I intended, wasn't that it was fleshed out that I thought we made it clear at the, or you, the, you, the people voting in favor of it had made it clear at that hearing. And then what we were doing um, was, um, was voting on, was just making sure that it was consistent with what we had done at the hearing because there were several changes to the draft oh, resolution. I, I, but but, it, but it's, we don't know whether we vote. I think we voted. Uh, some people I, on the board don't think we voted. I so, believe I'm sorry, but I believe we voted. I believe that council at the time directed us that we could still refine the language. I worked carefully with Christy. I actually, I, let me just finish. I actually compromised a little bit to make, you know, to try to bring it into line with what everybody would find acceptable. Um, and then this is the result. So I'm not sure why this cannot just simply be our findings since if, if you because need- Because if I think we voted last time and so we would have to go back and listen to that and see exactly what we did. Um, and I think what we did is there was a motion to, um, in other words, it was, I don't remember if it was you, Meg, or I think you, Meg, but I could be wrong. Let's say you, Meg, I'm just going to say, let's say you made it, you made the motion to approve this piece of it. Um, someone seconded it. And uh, based on the draft resolution of edits, and then the discussion was just making sure that everything was consistent with what was discussed. I think that's what happened. Um, and I don't think this is consistent with what was discussed. So I think this is adding things that were never discussed at that hearing. Um, and so I don't think this is what was voted on, but, and that's what I thought we were okay. doing. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying it was or wasn't what was yeah, done. I'll just add another point. I, when I sent it back to Christy, I actually added timestamps to show that it, it alluded to a point we made. We didn't say it with the exact words, but we were not making a new point that we had not brought up. And I actually sent in, I don't know if Michael got it, I actually sent in the text with a timestamp as when we mentioned something that could be, you know, as was actually the point and it was just written better instead of our kind of stuttering oral attempt to say it. So I actually did a lot of work to try to prove that with everything that we had referred to. Okay, Mike, Mike what do, my question for you is, what do we do now? Do, can, do we, A, now, is this, was this voted on? If it was voted on, then I thought we had to amend, I mean, it's here because I thought we had to do something with the language. So um, if, if it wasn't, if it was voted on, then I thought we were just amending the language. But in order to do that, we have to vote on it again. I, but it's not a separate resolution. It's just like a correction of the prior resolution, not a separate resolution. Um, which, I mean, what? Well, we, because we filed the other one. If the other one's been filed. I don't know. We don't know. That's the question. If we only signed the area of it with the lapse provision, then maybe we never filed this one. That's my point. I don't know what we did. No, we never filed this one because we only filed that one. We guys, nobody signed this one. Then it was never filed. So I think we have to revote. I don't know, but Michael, I did send in a, in a, a document that had a timestamp to try to prove that it alluded to it. It was in clumsy language. This is better language. So yes, it was new words. It was not new. It was not at this point. Let me just ask Michael. It was, it was making new, it wasn't trying to make new points. Um, so I don't know if you had that. So I thought it was in the spirit of what Christy was saying that she was gonna make sure that it, it represents what we've all said. Um, and then I checked with Abby separately and Greta separately. And we all agree that this represents our findings. I sent in a timestamp to show that it was things that we had mentioned in a brief way or clumsy way. Um, and, and Christy had given us the sense that we would have the chance to uh, write it better. So 
Um, I think we have to know if the if the resolution wasn't filed and it's supposed to be filed within a certain number of days, this is an entire month and a half after the meeting, um, whether we need to re-vote on this, I don't know that it's a big deal to re-vote on this, um, or what we're doing, are we, um, I mean, I don't know how we attach something to a resolution if the resolution was filed. I don't know how we can do that if we've already filed the resolution, which presumably wasn't filed. So if the resolution wasn't filed on this, then um, does the vote, then what do we submit, what would be submitted to the county when we file it, right? What gets filed? This, the other resolution, is this a piece of that other resolution? I'm not quite sure what we're doing. So I, that's why I'm saying I don't know what we what we're doing. Does it have to? It can't be separate resolutions when the application asks for different. Um, yeah, it could be separate resolutions. I'm not arguing that we can't revote on this or vote for the first time on this. I think that's fine. But, but can't we make this a separate resolution without revoting? Why does why would that take a revote to make this a separate? Resolution? If this is a separate resolution, then we haven't voted on it yet. We either voted on both or we didn't vote on both. If we voted on both, then this is already adopted, whether or not it's filed or not. If we didn't, if we can't have this as a separate resolution, if it hasn't been voted on, I'm not sure what the problem with re-voting on this is, if we need to re-vote. And I would like not to vote on it today because I, or make a decision today because I don't know what it is. My, I leave the, my view is let's, see what Mike has to say about this issue. So I think it's a legal wow. question. Do we, can we do this? Um, can we vote on it? Do we need to vote on it? If we don't need to vote it and we're just sort of substituting language, what, how, how does that get happen and exactly what? We have to determine if the other one was filed, correct? That's the first thing. And we, we don't to... know that. Well, well, Meg points out that she doesn't think she or and I signed it, in which no, case we could never have you look at the one, I, it's, I think Doug just sent it to you, August 23. It actually has a stamp from Betty Ann. Wait, you said August 23 she sent it? I'm sorry, I thought I said what I said. Let me find it again, I just lost it. No, you said August 13th, I think, didn't you? And that's, and that's the one I sent over to her, August 13th. I'll look it up again here. Please see the attached adopted resolution. For your file. And that usually means it's like a done deal when it's for your files. In that case, it looks like we never voted on the first, on the other one. So I don't know that, that's what I'm saying. I'm not arguing, all, all I'm saying is given this, it, we, we, she didn't send an adopted resolution for the other, so maybe it wasn't adopted. And if we voted on it already, then what is this? And that's all I'm asking. I'm not, I'm not trying to charge anybody. I just want to make sure we're voting on, we're doing what we should be doing in order to make sure this is done correctly. But we're time barred from voting on it. So we can't vote on it. We would have to, um, you know, and, and the thing is I had this all done before our last August 13th. I had this done and for some reason it just didn't get on the agenda for till now. But I had it been on the August 13th because we weren't, it wasn't on the agenda. We, we said, not many of you commented when I tried to put other things on that agenda. Others of you said, no, 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 only I, I the lobby. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It wasn't on it. It doesn't matter why or why not it wasn't on the August 13th agenda. Talking, I'll talk. I did this months ago is what I'm trying to say. I didn't know whether it had to be on the August 13th or it's just like, hey, I thought I would say Greta's good with it. Abby's good with it. Here's my timestamps proving to the attorney that we had already said it. I thought it would be done. I didn't know it would have to be on an agenda and then we would have to wait until September to look at it. So, um, so um, Mike? Just a quick thing. Uh, would, you send, would you send that to me as well? What would you like to be? August the email with the um, I guess the draft resolution. Which email with the draft resolution? He sent comments. Well, the said, resolution that you, the, the resolution that Betty Ann sent. That was not on this. That was only on the lapsed variances, and that was filed presumably. It was adopted. It wasn't a draft anymore. Right. It was adopted. It was filed with the county, 
and that's done. The lapsed variance is, is done. Um, so Mike, what do we do now? Do we vote? Do we just accept? Because I, I, my, my discussion with Christy is that we had to discuss this at a public meeting in order, because these were changes. So I don't know the answer, but, but I don't know about the voting thing. Since I, I thought we had voted at the last time and, and, and Greta and maybe Abby are saying they didn't think we'd voted. So on the final resolution, in which case we have to vote now. So very simple to look at the tape and see whether we voted. Exactly. I, I agree with that. All I said was we needed to do that. That's what I said. We should look at the group. I had another part to that sentence. We oh. did, so we did vote. It was my understanding that we simply needed to align on the refinement of the language. And Abby and Jenna, Greta and I can all confirm. So I don't, I am holding that we don't need a vote. We voted, we don't need to reopen it, but we voted and we refined the language after the fact. And Christy had led me to believe that that was fine because we were not finding any new findings or making new points. We were refining the language because we actually, when we voted, we did not have a written document in front of us. We had our thoughts and, and things, and then we had something written down. And then we made what was written down better, but I sent in a time lapse to show that it was it it aligned with the remarks that we had made that night. So We're I am making a decision I, today about I'm that. I'm holding that we voted and that we had all agreed upon this and had made these comments that I know Robin feels that is a real change. And we're holding that it wasn't a change, it's a refinement of the findings that we had. So we I, I want to just point out that if you discussed it with any of the other board, that wasn't what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to review it and just, you said you discussed it with them. What, what, the, what your job as a secretary is doing for somebody who's signing this is simply to review it and make sure it is consistent with what was done. I didn't say I discussed it. I discussed it with Christy. I hope that's okay. If I wasn't supposed to, I discussed it with Christy. Then I sent it without any discussion, any preamble, nothing. I simply said it to Greta and I simply said it to Abby, if that's wrong. But no, nobody had, uh, the board members had a discussion, please. Okay. Um, okay, so Mike, we're back to what are we doing now? It is on the agenda. What is it that we're doing? What is it that we needed to do today? I thought we were reviewing it today and if everyone was gonna vote and accept it and add it or append it to the other language. And this would constitute, like Meg said, a refinement of the language. So do we need to vote? So, so the resolution, right, which is a separate resolution, the resolution on the, on the fair and affordable housing unit has never been filed. So the resolution that the board will have taken is this resolution and as an entirely and completely separate resolution. You see, you keep saying amended to, appended to. There's nothing to append it to if there was no other resolution, if this is the only resolution. Then vote on the one in front of you tonight. So we have to vote on it. Yeah. Okay. So making? that's what I think we need to do. So somebody want to make a motion to approve this? I make a motion to approve this resolution. Okay, is there a second? I second. Um, okay, uh, so we can vote. So Meg? Yes. Greta? Yes. Abby? Yes. Doug? You're, you're muted, Doug. You're muted. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining? Yes. Okay. I am going to vote no. And since we're now taking the vote, I'm going to read my dissent into the minutes. Um, I disagree with the resolution adopted by the board, as I believe that a variance to reduce the number of fair and affordable housing units to be provided is not a use variance. Section 7-7121 of New York State Village Law and Section 342-89.1 define use variance as a variance for the use of land for a purpose which is otherwise not allowed or is prohibited by the applicable zoning regulations. Area variance is defined as a variance, 
quote, for the use of land in a manner which is not allowed by the dimensional or physical requirements of the, absolute, of the applicable zoning regulations, unquote. While the number of fair and affordable housing units does not relate to the dimensions or other physical requirements of the village of Mamaronet Code, the New York Court of Appeal has previously determined that a variance for the number of required parking spaces is an area variance stating that, quote, while the change in this case is not strictly one of area, the variance is to be treated as an area variance. Stated differently, the applicant's proposed alteration would conform to approved uses for business A zones, um, matter of Colin Realty LLC v. Town of North Hampstead, 24 NY 2nd, 90, NY 3rd, 96, 106, um, 996 NYS 2nd, 559, 5, 564, 2014, citing matter of Overhill Building Company v. Delaney, 28 NY 2nd, 449 at 443-1971. And in Mobile Oil Corp v. Village of Mamaroneck Board of Appeals, 293 AD 2nd, 679 at 679 to 680, 740 NYS 2nd, 456 at 457 to 458. The um, New York Court of Appeals, the, the, the new appellate division for the second department said the variance sought by the petitioner was an area variance, not a use variance, since the petitioner was not seeking to change the essential use of the property. The essential use of the property will remain as a gas station even with the erection of the canopy. Uh, close quote, I think I forgot to say the open quote. So too in the instant case, the essential use of the property, which is the permitted use of the property, will remain residential regardless of whether the applicant provides two fair and affordable housing units or one fair and affordable housing unit. To consider this a use variance means that the use of the property for affordable housing is essentially different than the use as market rate housing. Whether a use is rented for $100 a month or $10,000 a month, the proposed essential residential use remains. The Village Zoning Code makes this clear. Section 342.30 lists the permitted uses in general commercial districts and residents use under section, subsection P of that section is a permitted use. The use is subject to certain requirements set forth in 342-50, but this does not make it a non-permitted use. Service stations, restaurants and clubs, among other permitted, permitted uses are also listed in section 342-30 under the provision that it is subject to certain other sections, but this does not make them unpermitted uses. Section 342.50 is an Article 7 of the zoning chapter of the Mamaroneck Code and is entitled Standards for Uses Subject to Special Permit Procedure. There are more than 10 uses which are listed in Article 7, none of which has ever been considered a non-permitted use by this board. The language of 352.50 says that special permits from the planning board are required for residence uses in commercial districts. Section 342-50B provides six requirements for such uses where permitted, which include, among others, requirements for separate entrances for residential commercial uses, limits on developments within 50 feet of certain waterways, and in subdivision six of such section, the requirement that Residence uses must provide fair and affordable housing units in accordance with the following schedule. The use, as recognized by our code, is residential, and the affordability requirement is similar to the other requirements in the same section. In other words, they go to the standards for such buildings, not the use. It is worth noting that if this building had fewer than five residential units, no fair and affordable housing units would be required. So market rate use is an appropriate use. The resolution adopted by the board seems to make a point of noting that section 342-3 of the village code includes definitions of fair and affordable housing unit and market rate housing unit. However, such definitions do not make such units a separate use. While the provision of affordable housing is critical to our society and to our village, the application was correctly submitted as an area variance and the building that will be built is and remains a permitted residential use. Okay, um, that is it. I voted no with my dissent. Everyone else has voted. We're done with this application. Okay, moving on to the next. Um, application 3A 2020, Pamela and Alexander Horn, 401 Rushmore Avenue. Um, so anyone have any thoughts? There was a draft resolution circulated. Um, anybody have any comments on that? My only comment is that I'd like to add to it. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm just 
you know, we've got so many of these in it since there is a family room and that um, a no bathroom can be constructed. I don't, since it's, in a, since it's in a separate, in a sense, almost a separate portion of the building that could be converted into a separate unit, even though there's no kitchen, I don't want to have any issues. So I think we have to say that. I think that's really, you're going to tell somebody they can't put a bathroom because you're afraid that they're going to convert. I want to make sure, I, I, want, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to make sure that we don't have this issue of turning it into a unit, uh, putting up putting up all the cooking facilities, they, then, then we have no separate, and that, okay, then I'll do a different. I, I don't disagree with you. I, bathrooms are appropriate in family rooms. Then perhaps what we need to say is to say as a condition, provided that they do not uh, close off the entrance from the um, family room to the remainder of the house and that they do not put a separate entrance onto this with a locking door. That's what I would add. Okay, I'll vote no then because I, that, I think that's intrusive into how we're telling somebody where they can put a door and a lock. Um, you know, they can't turn it into a veterinarian office either, but we're not saying, oh, you can't put a countertop there because you might use it. That's just, they cannot use it for an unpermitted use, but you can start telling people where, what they could separate or not separate in a single family home. That's really becoming, I, I that's a, I think that's a, absurd. And I think that's really intrusive on a homeowner's right to use their property the way they want to use it. I, I, I disagree. I don't think it's intrusive. I also don't think it's right. because it's not really space that you created a, a, a dwelling unit. So absolutely, you keep referring to like, go to the board of trustees and clarify what you want and what won't want to happen. But you start telling everybody in the village, you can't put a door here and a lock here when they might just want, they don't want their kids to go to their ensuite bedroom upstairs. And you're telling them they can't put a door and a lock there because you're afraid that they're going to do the wrong thing. I, I, I think we're way overstepping our bounds. All right. Other members of the board? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why we need it because we say that, um, In the work done here under, well, I mean, I think we should change the language. I think we should say the, the work done here under shall be in material compliance with the plans filed as, we, as filed with this application period. Doesn't that just kind of, I don't, I'm not sure we need anything more than that. Um, I think I, I do think we need, because it may be that during construction, the plans may show seven feet somewhere. And during construction, um, it turns out it really has to be six feet, eight inches. I don't know. I'm just making but that's up. why I say material compliance, material well, compliance. Um, I think, compliance, I, I think you're right. I think you're right, Greta. Um, I think you're right. I think maybe what we should do is say, um, um, and provided that no changes are made to the to any of the um, findings, right? We don't want any changes to these findings, right? They can't change it from five, the variance, the side yard, and provided that none of such, and, and, no, and provided that no changes are made to any of the condition, not, not the conditions, to any of the, um, sorry, I lost my cup, my first page of this, um, and provided that no changes are made to the, uh, standards as to which we are giving a variance, meaning that any, leave in what you said, material compliance and provided that no changes are made to, but yeah, I don't want to say that because that implies that we could make other changes. Um, no material changes, no material changes. You right, but I guess what I don't want to happen, out. Greta, what I don't want to happen is the following. Um, sorry, I don't have the, because I don't have the first page in front of me. Um, what I don't want to happen is that um, they, whatever they're getting a, hang on, let me see if I can find it. It'd be better if I can make sense out of what I'm saying. Um, oh, here's the first page. Um, Oh, 
Oh, well, two things. Um, the two things. First, I think that I want to change. First, oh no, no, that's it. So in the se first power in the second paragraph, it lists all the specific changes. You know, the specific variances that they want. Um, well, I don't want mater non-material change to be. Oh well, um, the applicants propose nine. Let's say the side, the lesser side yard setback is. They come in and they say, no, 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 we need 9.6 um, feet or 9.7 feet. To me, a change in anything in those standards is material, even if it doesn't seem large. So I, I'm agreeing with material, but somehow we have to making making sure, and maybe what we define have to say- Define what we think is material. At least to this extent, we can't define the world of materiality, but I think to the yeah. extent that these, the, these, these, things, and I don't know how we want to do, I don't know, I don't have quite language that we should use, but I want to make clear that you can't go from 11 point, you know, from 9.5 to 9.4, and because it's only, it's really a small change, that that's considered okay, because eventually you can really sort of eliminate it. Because, uh, because you're saying that any change, you're basically saying that um, any change relating to the, um, the dimensions of the variance request would be considered material. Yeah, that's exactly, that's what I would say, right. So I think that's way, a good way to do it um, so that um, shall be in, in material compliance with the plans as filed with this application and provided that any change that, um, any change to the, uh, to the, to the, Measurements, what would those be called? What I, you... said, oh, I said to the dimensions or measurements of the variance request. And, so, and, and, and any changes to the dimensions or, or um, standards of the variance request shall be considered material. Right. I'm okay with that. Um, I had um, another issue. Um, when they said the variance requested was not substantial, I think we agreed that actually the variance request was substantial, but as we used, because it actually represented 35% variance relief. But I think we agreed using the balancing factors that um, on balance that, you know, was, um, it was in the interest to go forward with it. So I, I, I wanted to change the language for, to say, this is under C, while wait wait well, under uh, oh while, under the condition yeah yeah something to the effect of while the lesser side yard variance requested is substantial representing um i guess over or or about 35 percent variance wait. relief this is wrong c says there will only be a 12 foot increase in nonconformity that's just wrong because there's multiple. Yeah, I, I, I cross that off. Yeah, there's multiple nonconformities. Yeah, what I had, what I suggested, and there might be some other language that's better because I actually did this um, a, a while ago. Um, while the lesser side yard variance requested is substantial, representing about a 35% variance relief and increasing the home's existing nonconformity, comma, other properties in the immediate vicinity received comparable or greater variances for lesser side yards. I'm okay with that. Anyone else okay with that? Mike, do you have that? What were you asking? Did you hear what Greta said so that you can incorporate them into the written resolution as to be filed? Yep. Okay. You got that, Mike? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can always go back to this. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Could you read, read again? I'm about to make a suggestion. Uh, Greta, if you don't mind just sending it in writing. Sure. Send it in as an email. That yeah, way, everybody so has I'll it. I'll send it. To, so I'll send it to Mike. Only who? Who, who do I send it to? Just Mike. 
Robin, I'm going to send it to Mike and Will. Isn't that the okay. topic we were having about open meeting law that it should go to the, the planner and he should distribute it out? Right, that's why I said he should send it to Will and to Mike because you go to council. So I think that's who it should go to. Yep. All right. Um, I'm sorry, could you tell me what paragraph you changed again with the material change, that language? I'm not. I think that's number A. Well, wait, that's two things. That's in, the, that's in the conditions. Yeah. So if you could help me out and clarify what you're requesting change. In the conditions. So it would be in the sense that begins resolved in accordance with the vote of this board taken on August 13th, which is not correct because that's not when we vote, we're voting. Um, in accordance with the vote of this board taken on today's date. Um, that the request for a variance is hereby granted subject to the following conditions. Um, and then she makes the language that any work done here under shall be in material compliance with the plans as filed with this application and provided that any changes to the dimensions or standards um, for which the variance was granted shall be considered a material change, right? Yep. I would like to make a comment on C. I thought this boiler- C what? Wait, Meg, C of the conditions or C of the findings? Sorry, just clearing up what you're talking about. Conditions. Okay. All right, I'll put my picture back. I was, I was taking a drink and I took my back. So C in the, in the, in the findings. I thought this was sort of the boilerplate language and I thought we were going to, to temper it. The applicant shall procure a building department from the building department within one year um, and I thought we would say something in order to complete the project for which this application right. was, was, you know, it was um, a right way. And um, so it couldn't just be any building permit. And also, uh, the problem is, as we just to interrupt you, as I discovered, <laughs> which I which I agree with you, that's what we thought. But our village code says, and this is where we. I'm not sure we can do this, and maybe we can anyway. 342-90, um, I have to find it again. Which are the, you know, the rules for the, the procedure for the, the for variances, 342- and I'm looking for the exact section, this is, I found it, 94 um, F says, unless a building permit is obtained within 12 months. So I guess we could make it more restrictive. So I guess that's, we can make it more restrictive. We're, right. we're the one giving the exception. So we're putting the conditions in so we could. I guess we can make it more, no, no, I think that's right. We can make it more restrictive. It's a building permit. We're saying what kind, it okay. doesn't change that. I just wanted it to refer to the fact that they have to build this, not their, the playhouse in the back or something. And no, I, I wasn't disagreeing with you. I think your point is right. I was just a little concerned about this when I read it, but I think the way you we do the way that's st stated would be okay because it's a condition. Nothing that says we can't have a condition like this. So what are we going to call it? And also, all work should be completed with one year from the day of the building permit to complete the project. Okay. Um, that's fine. I, guess, I guess that's it's it, if it, you're talking. And, and that will be now the new boilerplate. Well, I think we're not technically voting on boilerplate. So I think that okay. what we are saying to Mike is in the future, when you draft resolutions, this is the way we prefer it to read. All right. Okay. I think that kind of covers the whole thing of what boilerplate is. Do you have yeah. that, Mike? Yep, I've got it. Okay. Why would you put a restriction of 12 months to get something complete? Yeah, it wasn't usually, I thought it was a shorter time to get the building department and then a year to build it. There's no reason that um, we have to have any condition on building, but I do think that is probably right, a year is too short. Um, they're building you know, a, um, it may take, I mean, a year is very short, construction it could often take takes 15, more than a year. It could, it could take 15, 18, 24 months. 
No, I'm especially, especially with all the construction that's going on now. I thought it, I always thought it was a long time to get the building permit. Wasn't a year of kind of stretching it you out. You have you have to get a building permit within what twelve months? Yes, that's because the code says so. Okay, right. if, if that's all right with everybody. It's okay. But I, I think that Doug is right. We have if we want to obligate them to build it. I think he's right that we should give them two or three years to build. Yeah, 24, 24 months or, or, or 30. They can always okay. come back to us and, and just say that it, it got stuck, but two years sounds fine if they got stuck. I don't think, but I think it's, you're not, I mean, construction takes longer. And I think, I think he's right. And I would agree that we should make it 24 months from the date of the building permit. Fine with me. So 24 months? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments, changes, wording? You know, I wonder if that's the right wording to complete. So let, let's say, let's say after 24 months, they don't complete it, but they're, you know, 90% Done. They have to come and back to us. Come back to us. And then we're just gonna then we're gonna have to say yes because they're ninety percent done. The whole right? point of putting a so cap. What, this is a, what is the point? The whole point is that it, they don't save this and then twenty five years later when it's a whole new comprehensive plan build this that we're approving it for the current. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Um, okay, um, so let us take a vote as amended with the changes that we discussed. All right, so anyway, I guess somebody needs to make a, resol a motion to I'll approve. Make a to approve the resolution with the changes we just discussed. Second. There a second? Oh, I thought you said. Oh, I will second. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were seconding yourself. Oh, I guess I couldn't, but I do. Yeah, no, no, I was trying to say, is there a second, but it doesn't matter. Um, okay, let's vote. Meg? Yes. Greta? Yes. Doug? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I vote yes, this is approved. Okay, as edited. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, the, the tree ordinance. Now, the, the um, do we wanna discuss the tree ordinance now? I don't know who has comments on the tree ordinance. It's kind of late, it's midnight, um, but the board did ask us to comment before, the, and they, because their hearing is gonna be, I don't know, later this month. So um, let me just make it simple without a lot of discussion. Does, who, do, do people have comments to the tree ordinance? One. Um, and I have one. Doug, do you have any? No. Abby, do you have any? No, um, but why don't you guys discuss? I, I, I really gotta go. I can't, I can't stay away. Because it'd be good if we only have a couple comments. I think we can do no, it tonight. I'm just gonna make one point. I'll tell you really fast. It says, that the decision can be appealed to the village manager's designee. And I just question why that's not either the ZBA or the planning board. I, I wonder why it's varying. It's usually a variance of something that's gonna be adopted by the zoning code is either us or the planning board. I think in this situation, since they seem to say what the trees should be or not, it might be the planning board is the best one to get a variance from and to explain why they think something should be. I don't know why it's going to the village manager. Definitely. I think that's a good point. I agree with your comment. Well, the reason uh, it's not coming to the zoning board is because it's outside of the zoning code. Right, that's but it could come to the planning, to the planning board. board. But what she's saying is it should come to the planning board rather than go to the village manager or his designee. The point is to keep it within the administrative agencies that normally review these things. And one, one individual having to make the decision about it. Right. No, no not putting any uh, doubt about the village manager's wonderful ability to 
why is the situation just better to leave it to a vote? Um, yeah, I have comments, but they're more on a, a substantive that I don't think relate to the board, the board's purview, so I'm not going to make them. And if I decide to submit them, I'll submit a letter to the um, trustees with my, my comments about this. Um, so anybody else have any other comments from the board? No. Yeah, All right, so then. I'll, I'll admit I didn't, I didn't look at it. I didn't read it. So um, if I have time to read it, how would I communicate my comments? Well, the issue is you can always submit comments. Just Greta Heaney can submit comments. If you want them to be yes, comments that's... from the board, then we would have to consider them. And if not tonight, we'd have to consider them at the next meeting. The problem is the next meeting may be after the board has a public hearing on it. I don't know if they're gonna close their public hearing or what they're gonna do when they have a public hearing on this. So we don't know whether they would consider those comments. So um, my view is that Okay, okay, I certainly don't want to hold back your comments. Um, why don't we do it this? Leave it at this. You submit some, the board submits some comments. If it's, if the uh, matter is still open for comments, when we next meet and, I, meet and I have some additional comments, then I can give them that. That sounds great. Does that make sense? That sounds great. Okay, so, um, so, Will, if you take the one comment that Meg um, raised, which is the appropriate body for making the variance decisions, then that would be the board's comment. And then I think we're done. I don't think we want to discuss minutes tonight. It is midnight. I think we want to end this. We have quite a lot we'll have to vote on next one. Is there any really simple ones we could vote on? Even if Abby has to go, we're still on a quorum. Oh. We? You mean the ones that were closed today? Sorry, I totally even forgot right. about them. Really simple ones, so, and then they don't, so we don't have so much the next agenda. And I think so the ones that were closed were 600 Lorraine, Taylor for 600 Lorraine, right. uh, Modern on the Rails. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I got to take my kids to school tomorrow. So are they um, I'm going to say good night. You physically? guys keep going now, okay? Yeah. Have a nice good night. Okay, so just go, so the closed applications are 600 Lorraine, uh, Modern on the Rails. I don't think we can vote on the variance because we need a draft resolution. Remember, we don't have draft resolutions. I think the only thing we could vote on are special permits. So if you want to vote on Modern on the Rails. The extension of the Rooster Cafe, that we can't do that. We're we can't because we didn't close the hearing. Um, so I think we, um, Oh, wait, I take it back. Yeah, no, we didn't, we did cl close it. We, we can vote on, no, I say have an adjourned. We have, it, it was adjourned. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes and they're confused. You're trying to get the complaint. Right, clarified. So we can vote on a 37 SP 2018 Modern on the Rails, the extension of the outdoor permit. We can vote on, what else was closed? Well, I, don't think, but I, think that's, I think that's a little complicated. Um, Which we one? probably want a draft resolution for that. So let's take a straw poll on so we can direct the village um, attorney how to draft. So on 600 Lorraine Street, um, everybody who's in favor of it, at least let's start with something. Everybody who's in favor, just raise your hand. I, mean, I don't know. What? I'm, not, I'm still not, I'm not sure. Okay, so then we just vote. Then we'll leave it open for consideration. Forget we can't vote on it. Okay, I was trying to decide. Modern on the rails, I think we can vote on. We don't need a, a draft resolution. It's a special permit. Is that okay with everyone? Right. No, it's to renew the outdoor special permit as is. No music. Right. No music added. Nothing added. Nothing different. So you want to make that motion? You've made the motion? I make the motion that we approve the special permit for the outdoor seating or modern on the rails um, in the same, exactly with the same conditions. conditions. Required. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. Didn't it have music, the previous one? No, not outside, it did not. Okay. Um, so, okay, you, you moved, I seconded. Um, if there's no discussion, we can vote. Greta? Yes. Doug? Yeah. Meg? 
And I vote yes as well. So that's approved. And then the only, I think that's it. Oh, um, what about the special, I take it back. The other one that we might be able to vote on is um, 11 SP 2020 for Barkila. Yeah, it's fine with me to, if it's the same conditions that were in the special permit that were given to the prior business owners with just the addition of windows and doors closed um, 10 p.m. or later if music is playing. No amplified music. It's already in there. That one is, it can only be acoustic music, or I guess to say no amplified sound within. So they can't have carry right. So no amplified sound at all within the building. If they acoustic are music. At, That's at, it. And have to keep the doors and windows closed. Okay, that's okay with me. I'm okay with the with that resolution. I'd be okay with that. Everyone okay with it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to make the motion, Meg? Okay, I make a motion to approve the special permit for bar. I'm going to say this wrong. What's the what's the number? Eleven SP twenty twenty Barkila. SP twenty twenty Barkila. 308 Mamaroneck Avenue, just to be clear, so. 308 Mamaroneck Avenue, um, to approve uh, a special permit that matches the same conditions as the prior special permit that was approved for the business owner with the addition of um, no amplified sound um, inside the business. And windows and doors must be closed if acoustic music is being played after 10 p.m. at night. I think just if any music, just to be clear, so right. I think if any music is being played. After, after 10. After 10 p.m. So we're not um, going to talk about the outside at all? I don't think we can, really. That's part of the village. The village decides. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we can. Well, it's the noise ordinance, 254. Right, but that's the village manager who makes that decision. We don't. I think the most it's not within the it's not within the physical premises. We're not approving a special permit for the public way. Well, they are also since we are in a position to where they cannot truly dine inside. They have parking spaces out in front of these businesses that are set up for dining outside. And yes, I think we can. I think we were told this came up some t a couple of years ago, last year, and we were told, I think council at the time said to us clearly that it was not within our purview. But the restaurant has expanded to outdoor. But the restaurant, but it doesn't matter, the outdoor part is not, we're, we're approving for the lot. I don't think we can approve for the outdoor. I'll leave that within Mike. Mike? Mike? Yeah, I would say that that's outside of our purview um, to try and regulate the sidewalks or what, what's happening there. Because I'm telling you, it's going to... There are people who live there with kids who live there, and they should be entitled to peace and quiet. They shouldn't have to listen to that. Yeah, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't think that's under our jurisdiction. So we can, I mean, there's uh, lots of other restaurants that have that we've granted special permit for. We haven't said anything about the outdoor. I'm not sure what's different about this one than the other uses, um, well, than uh, anything else well, on the Maranek Avenue. Uh, you got to start somewhere. Um, I, I have a problem with doing that. I think maybe this is something that we might, and again, we can think about whether or not we're concerned and we're, you know, but we certainly can, you know, everybody can write comments to the village manager saying we shouldn't be approving some of these. Um, Noise pollution is just as bad. Yep. I am not arguing. I'm just, just, you know, we don't have. I did make a motion if somebody. I'll second it. Okay. Um, any discussion before we vote? No. Um, Oh, wait, I do want to make one change to it. Sorry, I, I know you made the motion, I, but I want to make sure that there are, um, and provided no changes to the physical configuration or physical layout of the interior or exterior of the building. But they, I just said that seems a little restrictive because- Oh, right, it's a little too. No, no changes to the numbers of seats um, that were previously- 
kitchen, placement of, uh, the, placement of the cooking facility? I mean, I don't care what they put in their cooking facility. I mean, if they need a new oh, microwave. Like if they brought it out to the front. Well, it should, would be, should we say no material changes? Material changes are fine. Well, except that if they change the fixed, yeah, because fixtures are part of it. I mean, seats, what the seats look like are never, we don't, are not kind of something we ever review. So, and we don't review fixtures. So I think they're not subject to the zoning code. So I think that um, that's, would be okay. Okay, so I make a motion with what I said before, plus what Robin just added. As and I'll second it. Um, and I say yes. Doug? Yes. Meg? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, I think we're done. Can I make a motion we adjourn? Second Madam it. Chair, just really quick, before, before you do that, I just want to say for the record that everybody was present uh, for the meeting tonight, as, so there was a quorum. Thank you. All okay. Right. Time, That's time it. To... Oh, so everybody, um, everybody in favor of adjourning, say aye. Yes. Aye. I'm sorry. We don't have time for the 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 one on high view. I thought we were we're not aligned on that. That would be too difficult to write. I think that the last. I mean, we could take a straw poll on that. So but I don't think straw poll and and just start and maybe get a resolution so then we can put it to bed next. Time at least. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. A straw poll. So let's take a straw poll. A straw poll is fine if everybody's willing to vote on it because it's not. This is not a vote, so I'm okay with that. Um, are, are every uh, so who's in favor of granting? Yeah, because we don't know what the would be the basis of the of the findings would be. I think there's been we need some discussion about what the basis would be. I think my basis for maybe granting it might not be the same as, but I guess if we have a draft resolution that supports it or opposes it. Everybody in favor of supporting it or opposing it? Supporting or opposing what? The application for the appeal. There was an oh, appeal. Great. The appeal to shut them down and stop them and have them go to planning? Yes. I absolutely vote no. Okay. Uh, Greta? I vote yes. I vote yes. Yeah, I actually don't know how I'm voting yet. So I think we can't do have a draft resolution. I, agree, I see what your problem is, but it will be good to do, but I'm not sure how I want to vote on this. I'm, I'm thinking, my guess is I want to vote yes, actually, but much more limited. So I don't know at the end of the day that how we'll have it. Could we have a couple of findings that we think would support the yes so that we could move it? Otherwise, this keeps going on for a whole Fine. Other Why don't we have um, Mike draft a couple of fine we're not voting today so doug it's not a vote it doesn't matter we'll draft something up and if we and if on reviewing it we realize no we don't want any of this we can always vote no the straw poll just gives them some direction to to draft something so i'm okay with that draft something my finding is that um vegetation I, I, let's go home it's 12 15. i just want to quickly say that according to when you need a site plan that vegetation was moved. I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me, the code. It was a part of the application. Um, that that in and of itself, uh, they need a site plan. Yes. Yeah. You see, my problem is I don't think vegetation was moved. So um, yeah. that's where we, I, I'm more concerned. Moving if it's not three trees and a whole lot of, of brush all leaving. Yes, I, I, I don't think brush is moved. That's the problem. We, people, otherwise people can't clear their lots. So that's okay. why I'm concerned. Right. We're still talking, but just go to Google Maps and look at the picture of what was there before and then drive down the place and you tell me that vegetation didn't. Listen, so, people, people should have the right to clean their property and make it nice without having to run to the planning board and show them a site plan and said, I'm cutting this vines down. Yeah, that's my concern so. about the vegetation. So, I don't think so. And that's yeah. why I think it's a different um, thing. So I think we need to discuss this at the next meeting. That's and gonna, hopefully, that's, that, that's and you know gonna, what? I have a suggestion. Um, those of everybody comes in with more concrete thoughts about the language they want, and therefore maybe as opposed to having a draft resolution, so we can take a different look and have something more solid before us. Yes, it won't be shared, but you could read it and we could vote on something like that. I think that'll help because you're right. It'd be nice to move it along. Okay. 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 So I, I, I everybody in favor.
Yeah, everybody in favor of adjourning. Go ahead. Everybody in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.